Just as he said 
was searching, your love was never far. You made a way to get to me, you were the whisper leading me to your heart. Forever I belong to you.
got a feeling it's gonna get rowdy. Swing by, oh you heavens, let the praise go up as the walls come down. Oh creation, everything with breath repeat the sound. All these children, clean hands, pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. All right, good turn. Swing wide. Swing wide. to have you here with us wherever you are in the world man we are so thankful that you would join us today we have an awesome day in store so thank you for tuning in we've got some of our team on the chats so we can see our chat here wow it's starting already thank yes. you so much for being so early good. okay if you're in the chats right now why don't you let us know where you are watching from we want to know where you call home um, and we'll be looking out yeah. on the chat. Fantastic. So it's good. so great to see you. Zoe, this is going to be the best day. I know. You oh my gosh. and your team and the whole team have put together such an amazing day for you online. It'll feel like you're actually here, which yes. is great. Yeah. So good. Okay, well, we need to introduce ourselves. Sure. My name is Zoe. I'm from New Zealand um, and call Sydney home now. Um, and I am part of the marketing team here at college. Yay. Zoe, I didn't realise there's a snap moment. I'm from New Zealand as well. Yes. But <laughs> I so lost my I accent forgot. a long time ago. But I could say New Zealand. New I can Zealand. say that as well. But yes, yeah, my name's too. Belinda and I'm on team here at college. I'm one of the lecturers. I also work in higher ed, overseeing some other stuff that might make things run a bit more smoothly mm -hmm. for you. But you might see me in different times. You might even hear emails from me if you end up becoming a student here at college. I hope uh, they're always positive emails. That's the most important thing. They're always we positive all, from me. We always love an email from Belinda. Yay, She's yay. The, best. the smiley face emoji. I probably overdo it, but that's okay. I'm allowed to. That's my generation. We do the emojis. It's okay. It's so good. Okay, I can see a few people. We have Hi. people from the Netherlands. We have Joshua from Germany. Hey, hey Joshua. Josh. Hey, Joshua. We have people from Guatemala, oh my Indonesia. Lagos, Nigeria, Wonderful. Singapore. Oh my gosh. Oh, hey everyone. This is, awesome. this is Barcelona. So great. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It sounds like International Chapel already. Yes. And you haven't even arrived here, but that is exactly what college is like all over the world. We have students from all over the world. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first came here back in 2018, Lee Burns, our executive vice president, you've got to mm -hmm. always get that right, <laughs> told everybody that was gathered, 66 nations? I was like, no, not. Not 66, but sure enough, when you start to go through the list, so many nations yeah. represented here, and it just so makes this space, this place, even online, it makes it just such an incredible melting pot of mm -hmm. wonderful experiences and ideas and people and backgrounds, and yay. So good. So good. Welcome. Well, we are so excited for today. We've got a jam-packed day for you guys online. We've got some exclusive things just for you guys that people in the in the room here in Sydney aren't even going to get. So stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's great. Um, but in a few moments, we are going to have our info session. So we've got a bunch of our Hillsong team. We've got Lee Burns. We've got Duncan, our general manager. We've got some of our other incredible executive staff members who good. are going to be taking you through our info session which is all about what are the different co um, courses that are like available yeah. for you, um, different choices. study options that are available for you. Um, so we'll be going through that. We've got a student panel part of our info oh, session, that'd be good. which is going to be awesome. Yep. And You've then, been a student, Zoe. I have. Yeah. I have. How long ago? Okay, listen, I have a bit of an interesting story, which I think I'll get to a little bit later. Right. Yeah. But I am currently also an online student oh, at this very moment. Very good. But I have very also good. been an in-person student. But... 
I'll tell you more about that yes. later. In a minute. It's going to be great. Yeah. Um, but we've also got, so we've got a campus tour coming up. We've got some interviews with some of our staff members and students. Um, we're going to be having live classes. So later on today, oh, you're going to be able to excellent. be a part of the in-person live stream class. Ooh. Or we've also got an online experience for you. So you're going to be able to choose between both. So if you're interested in actually coming and studying on campus, we've got an on-campus lecture for you to be a part of. But if you're interested in studying online, then we've also got the online lecture for you guys. So... How is the crew so managing all of that? There must be someone who's got a master switch yes. and they have one job. I hope they flick the switch at the yes. right time for We've all of you to get team. into all those rooms. That's, That's so amazing. <laughs> Man, we need to give a round of applause to all the team. Woo. There are so many people Behind who are helping make this happen for you guys. Totally. So Thank you, team. We're so thankful for yeah. them. Yeah. So good. All right, we're ready for that story, Zoe. Are you ready? Zoe is an online student and she's been on campus as well. Like, yes. How does that actually work for you? Yes. Okay. So pretty and much. How did you start college anyway? You yeah. said you were mm -hmm. New Zealand, mm -hmm. Sydney. So good. Okay. So pretty much I'm from New Zealand. I came to college in 2015, straight out of high school. I moved over here to be a part of our vocational course, which you guys can study online. Um, so pretty much was here for two years, did the vocational course. I went back to New Zealand and I worked for a church back home. And then at the beginning of 2021, so after the COVID okay. season, yeah. I felt like God told me to actually come back and be a part of the Bachelor of Theology. So Ooh, okay. I was pretty much studying Bachelor of Theology in person, in classes. Amazing. Belinda was one of my lecturers and she is amazing. <laughs> well, I love her. She's She's got to say that she's standing next to me now, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I can take it. <laughs> so good. But yeah, so pretty much I was studying in person here in Sydney, awesome. doing my classes. And then now that I'm working full time, I've actually moved to online classes, yeah. doing it part time. So Yeah, it's awesome. I yes. love that. It's so easy to change up no matter what like your lifestyle looks like, whether you're working and want to do right. college part time. Yep. Man, there's so many options for you. We want to make sure we can make it happen for you so you can be a part of college. Whether you join us here in person or yep. you are a part of it from home, still connected in your home church right. and studying online. So good. Yes. And the same crew that teach you on campus mm -hmm. are the, the crew that teach online as well so you're not missing you're not missing that expertise you're not missing yeah. that that academic input mm -hmm. you get the, you know the good dr hayden nelson yes. teaching you here on campus he just happens to be my husband the best i know we love the I, not that i'm biased or anything but anyway the good dr nelson he teaches on campus and then he's also lectured online he's got mm -hmm. all his recordings online same with many of our other key academics here on team you get to hear from so many great experts who've been around the college for a long time mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, are good at what they do, hey? Yes, so good. Okay, we have a special guest, actually, oh. that we're going to bring in right yeah. now. Our secret weapon, actually. We need a drum roll. The heavy <laughs> artillery. We're bringing it in. Here he comes. We have Louise. <laughs> Let's hey, go. Louise. Hey, how's it going? I'm going to give you my mic, and I'll just smile. Here you go. Amazing. Hi, everyone. Hola. Para los que hablan español. Oh, let's go. <laughs> Definitely, we're throwing the Spanish out there. You probably noticed it. Wait, the now you need to translate anyway. for everyone else. I was just understand. saying, like, hello to everyone that actually speaks Spanish. So I love that. I know there's hello someone in Guatemala. Crew. <laughs> I love you guys. Okay, Luis, give us a yeah. lowdown. How did you end up in Sydney, Australia? That's an amazing question. I actually, came just specifically for college. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we can go into the 30 minute uh, testimony yes. or we can go to the uh, sneak yeah. peek of it. <laughs> no, actually, I think it was just uh, this season of my life with God was uh, sort of like bringing me back these kind of like dreams that I had as like a teenager with him. Mm -hmm. And it was actually an impossible dream, you know, like yeah. you ponder everything, you do the math and, it, and things like that. It's just like, nope, this never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm here. <laughs> so God moved every single thing that uh, I needed to be. He moved finances. He, um, you know, provided in terms of influence. And uh, my church actually moved around that as well. So it is a little bit of a story. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I came specifically for college. God was nice. like, you know what? You're doing great, but I have more for your life. Yeah. So it's just like, go there. We have dream about this. And just like, you know, sometimes it's just that matter of doing the first step. Yes. And then he takes care of the rest. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm here. So That's why I'm being here. Okay. So here. And tell everyone, what course are you doing at the moment? I'm doing my bachelor in theology. 
Yes. So, yep. Uh, this is going to be my last semester. Oh, actually. let's go. He's yes. about to graduate. So, How many yeah, weeks yeah, yeah. left? How like. many weeks? Is this like six weeks? Six weeks. Who's counting? Institute of Assignments. We won't talk about that. Oh, yeah. We're just waiting for graduation. I don't know if anyone here has ever tuned in for a graduation night. Yes. It's literally yes. one of the best nights of the year. So, we're excited yeah, well. for that coming up. So excited but, to be walking in that platform. Yes. <laughs> and you get to so good. down and a waterboard. It feels really official. It, it does. Feels. Like such an achievement. It's no awesome. other place, you know, can be celebrated, can celebrate you as much. So as true. We really love celebrating our graduations. Hey? Yeah, 100%. Mm. Okay, okay so Luis, you're also yeah. a part of our recruitment I am. Yes. team. So maybe some of you who are on this live stream have received an email yep, yep, from yep. Luis before if you've been starting your application or That's if you true. have questions. This guy is a legend. He is one of the people yeah. who is always um, in contact with people who are interested in college, people like you. So if you have any questions, here's a face to the name, Luis. We please, all know and love him. Please, please. Future students at Hilson.com. Yes. That's the email that you can email us in case that you have any questions. And this is a face behind it. Please do it, please. <laughs> <There's>, yes. <laughs> So I will be more than happy to answer to, you know, the, to the smallest question to the biggest question. So yeah, that's Amazing. it. Amazing. <laughs> so good. Well, so thank you for being part no, of it. No. We've got another friend. Well, Are you ready? Oh, we're going to bring in Kate. Oh, there we're going to bring in David. Who are we going to bring in? We're going to bring in Kaylee. Let's go. Hang on, we're, we're getting our friends mixed up here. We've got so many friends, we don't know what to do with them. Oh, look yeah, at this beautiful girl. Hello. Hey, we got Hi, the memo everyone. blue today. We did. You can have this. Do you want this? Microphone, do you want to be in control awesome. or do you want us to be in control? Um, listen, I like being in control, but uh, yeah, it's okay. I'll let you have the control, Belinda. <laughs> okay, all right. I will take the wheel. I'll take the mic. Amazing. So, okay, Kaylee. Kaylee, tell us what is your role on staff at college and then tell us why people should come to college. Okay, so I am the, oh gosh, what even am I? Who knows? Um, I, I'm basically the filler of holes, no. Uh, the creative and branding uh, manager, so I look after our incredible creative team, like our wonderful Zoe that is here. Um, a lot of what you're gonna see today in terms of when we're in chapel, um, that's kind of our team that runs all of that stuff, which is really awesome. Why you should come to college. Hey, actually, one thing I do have to say yeah. is, guys, we have so many people at the moment out in the foyer, which is awesome. They're all yeah, they're yeah. all getting coffees. I know it feels really, really quiet in here, but out in the foyer, everyone's getting coffees. So I really hope that right now you have a coffee in your hand. Yeah. And if you don't, can I encourage you? Mm. Go grab Go put the kettle on. Go put the kettle on, grab a coffee, grab a cup of tea, whatever it is that you drink, because these people are going to start funneling in here in yeah. a moment, and they're going to be filling all yeah. these seats, and we're going to be getting, the party's going to be getting four started. Minutes, four minutes We've to got go four grab minutes. a cup of tea oh or a coffee or a snack. Goodness. Four minutes. What? <laughs> Snacks. Snacks are great, aren't they? Snacks are so good. Um, reasons why you should come to college, in all seriousness, guys. Um, Hillsong College, for me, I attended college like most of us um, on staff now have as well. And it changed my life. Like, honestly, it changed my life. It changed my journey with the Lord. Um, I fell in love with Jesus just so much more um, than I ever knew or thought that I could. Um, so I would highly encourage you not just for like classes, but also like friends as well. I've met friends from all over the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Holidays galore, which is <laughs> awesome. Um, but yeah, friends, the experience, the practical application um, that you will receive when it comes to um, being able to take what you've learned in the classroom and apply it to um, your kind of everyday ministry serving and all of that sort of stuff within our church world is really, really awesome. Um, and in addition to that, discipleship like discipleship you will be discipled um, as a disciple here um, we we very definitely believe in you more than um, yeah. you maybe believe in yourself which is uh, a common yeah, a common common saying here um, so that's why I would encourage you if you haven't already um, done it make sure you uh, hit that apply button um, even if you know you have two options you can either come here physically which is awesome and you can get to be in this wonderful, wonderful venue, or you can apply for online mm -hmm. and you can get to do it from the comfort of your home. Like, how awesome is that? That's awesome. You do have to set your alarm early sometimes. I've got some, some team in South Africa and it's early in the morning when I catch up with them online, but that's okay. 
We have fun. We have fun at 2 a.m. in the morning if you want to join my tutorial. It's all cool. I, I tell you what, Belinda, I would join your tutorial. <laughs> I would too. At 2 a.m. Can I just say, Belinda is like this 24-7. Yes. Like, ne- like, Except when I'm asleep, but yeah. I probably like sleep with a smile. I don't know. <laughs> 24-7. So, you know, full of uh, energy over here. It's so good. Oh, hey, here they come. Welcome, everybody. Yes. Come on in. You're going to see some new faces oh behind us very, very soon. This is exciting. It's very, very so exciting. Cool. It so is. Fun. All right, should we bring in our last guest? Oh, our last guest. Kaylee, last have guest a great day. Thank you, Kaylee. Enjoy and thank you so much for all you Mr. do. Mr. David amazing. Hedlund. Let's David. Go. Welcome, welcome. Big guy, Dave. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here today. <laughs> How are you doing? Thanks for having me. So yes. good. Can you tell us where you are from? I am from the United States of America. Okay. Let's okay. go. We love the USA. Snap moment. There's probably a snap moment with some peeps online. What's a snap moment? It's like, it's like same, same, same. I'm, you know, there'll be a snap moment. Have you not played snap? It's like, you know, the <laughs> deck of cards and you, when you get that matching pair, you go snap. Never in my so life. So there's a snap moment online for some peeps from the US. Hey, whereabouts in the US? I'm from the great state of Missouri. Oh, yeah. Nice. If there's a Missouriite, Missouriite, Missouri a Missourian yeah. online, say yeah. hi in the chat. Say hi, David. And whatever is the secret handshake in Missouri, put it there on the chat. Does Missouri have any nicknames? Missouri? Missouri. Oh, that's a bit sad. Okay. Yeah, I get it. I'm from a place called Hamilton, and we call it the Tron or like Hammertown. Right. Yeah. I'm from a place called Glenwood in oh, Sydney. We love Glenwood. The best. We call it the G Wood. <laughs> the Good Wood. Let us know if your wood. city or your country has a nickname, because I always find this so interesting. So good. Okay. Hey. I think they're ready for us. Oh, yes, let's go. I think Wes is on. I think Wes is coming on soon. Amazing. Like, in a few moments, you're going to join <laughs> Wes, and uh, he's going to welcome everybody Hi everyone online. online. Oh, maybe he's Ooh. there. There he <laughs> is. There already? Can we yes. see Wes? Are we all good? Are we gone? Amazing. <laughs> so good. So good. Well, I wanted to welcome everyone online. Hi. I know you can't see me, but I can see you. <laughs> we have over a hundred people joining us online from all over the world. So if you are here, let's give them a, a round of applause. Over 20 nationalities joining us online. People that are thinking to come to, to, come to Australia, th- people thinking to, to actually study online. And you're all going to hear a little bit about it. But huge well welcome to all of you online. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever part of the world you are right now. Welcome to Sydney, Australia, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Yeah, it has changed my life. My name is... Wesley, if I haven't had the chance to meet some of you, I will by the end of the day. I would love to catch up with everyone and hear, to hear a little bit about his story. I'm joined here with a bunch of colleagues as well. And our goal for today is to get to know you, is to hear a bit your dreams, to hear more about what God has doing in your life, you know, and how can we come alongside you, equip you and empower you for all that God has for your life. So. Don't be shy, you know, if our staff around come around you, you know, hi, what's your name? You know, we just want to get to know you. We're not going to do anything, you know, awkward, <laughs> but we just want to get to know you. We love, love for you to uh, be part of this family today. So I actually get to do some uh, giveaway. So I'm going to ask Julia if you could pass me some of this um, great stuff here. I want to know who here came from the furthest. You can shout it out. Queensland. Uh, The US. Wow. Okay, we've got an international person here that literally traveled just to open day. She got on a flight. Where? Michigan. Okay, which state? South Korea. Oh my gosh, guys, incredible. So good to, we have some people from Brazil as well, I know. Let's go. Okay, so my geography needs a bit of work. I haven't done in a while, yeah. (laughs) So, South Korea gets one here. Yes, thank you so much for coming. Now we have two USA, Arkansas and Michigan. And okay, there's another American here. I see a friend just pointed out, you know, 
Whereabouts? Texas, the Republic of Texas, love it. So, okay, now to, um, to do a little bit of dif uh, different. How long have you been in Australia for now? One month, okay. 10 days, incredible. Where's my other American at? 12 days. Wow, okay, so I'm gonna give to the 10 days one. Thank you so much for being here. There we go. So good. So I wanna chat with who is, um, we like to say, uh, the most experienced person in the room. You know, some like, you, you have walked, walked with the Lord for a bit, you know, like you just... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You, you have some experience to give. Who is, the, who is the eldest person in the room? Do we have anyone in their 60s? 60s. 60s, no, in their 50s? Hey, Joseph here, my friend. Get it out. From, from uh, WA as well, from, from Western Australia. And now we have this incredible hat. To the youngest person in the room. Okay, any 14s? 15s? 15. Oh, anybody younger than that? No, you get it. That's yours. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, guys, once again, it's so good to have you here. It's so good to have over 100 people joining us online. Uh, it's going to be an action packed day. Stay linked. We also have an incredible team joining us online in the chat with you guys. So, if you have any questions, just drop in. We'd love to answer for you. But right now, I have the pleasure to introduce you to the one one who has the longest title probably in our church so that says a lot you know he is the executive vice president of Hillstone College Lee Barnes would you welcome please thank you guys how are you I would come down closer to you but I think I've got to stay camera they, they switch What's going on, Hugh? Which one do I look into? Either one, either one. Hey, welcome to everyone online. You guys are incredible and amazing. It's probably like 4 a.m. in some nations or late at night or midday or whatever it is, whatever time it is. We are super grateful for you. And hopefully you get to, not only we get to know you, but you get to know a whole lot more about us today. And so there is nothing worse than looking at your own photo on the screen. I literally feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> there you go. So I'm a lot better looking there, that's for sure. Far out. They must have put five filters on that thing. Gosh, incredible. So, um, so welcome to Open Day. And uh, those of you that don't know me, my name's Lee Burns. I'm the Executive Vice President of our college and have been that for almost 10 years now. I've been a part of our college since 2003 where I came in as the Dean of Students right back then and uh, then the principal of our Hills campus in 2007 and then the Executive Vice President in 2014. And, uh, and so I have the joy of leading our college both here and in the US and, uh, and very soon in South Africa and also online. And so it is a, uh, it's a huge joy and an honor. But let me, just, let me just tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit about what our college is about. Uh, I'm from Newcastle, which is a little coastal town two hours north of Sydney. It's, it, I always tell the Americans what Hawaii is to America, Newcastle is to Australia. Um, it is, uh, is, 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 that tr is that true? Is that, yeah, exactly. She's, she's stretching her mind now. I think that's what it was. What part of Newcastle are you from? No, okay. You're from the top end of town from, compared to where I'm from. And, uh, and so uh, I actually went to high school at Jesmond High School, which is just exactly a couple of hundred meters away. But, um, but I came down to college back in 1997 with a friend of mine. His name's Sanger. And, uh, and he's one of our pastors here, and he's now uh, our pastor of Hillsong, Newcastle. And him and I came down to college, and the reason we came to college was I was in South Africa, and 
I, uh, I asked a gentleman over there, I was over there surfing for three months and I asked one of the pastors over there, how can I get to learn more about the Bible? And he told me about this college and, uh, and he said it's seated within a church. So you, you're not only just learning the theory, you're actually involved in the church at the same time. And, uh, and I thought, well, that sounds like a great idea. So I came back, I applied and, uh, and I was out in the surf one day and, uh, and Sanger paddled out and, uh, and he said to me, Bernsey, where have you been? And I said, oh, I've been in South Africa surfing for three months. I said, next year I'm going to go to college. I, uh, I want to know more about the Bible. I want to know more about Jesus. I'd only been saved 12 months at that point. And, uh, and Sanger said, oh, I'll come down with you. And so we came down to college and we got involved in wildlife, which is our year, back then it was our year nine to 12 age uh, group. And I took on a group of high schools and Sanger took on a group of high schools. And this was kind of our leadership journey. And back then I remember having this young group of guys that I would disciple. And basically I would go to, go to college, learn as much about the Bible as possible and then come into RDG, which is our uh, connect group, and then teach them what I learned that day. Or I would uh, learn something during the day, and then I knew I'd be interning uh, in the afternoon, so I'd take what I learned in the morning and then put it into practice in the afternoon. Now, I look back now, and I realize that that was the education, both the learning and the practical working hand in hand together. Uh, the reason I believe that Hillsong College is so unique is that it's seated within the life of Hillsong Church. So you're not just in a college and then one day you'll get to be a part of a church, you're in college and church at the same time. So you could be learning something in class, you can walk out of here uh, and, and uh, same online as well, whatever you're learning, and then go into church life and you could be talking to one of the leaders, one of the pastors about what you learned during the day and you realize that that's all part of the education. And so for me, I loved it because when I was a carpenter, I would learn the theory in the morning, but then in the afternoon I actually had to do it. So for example, I would learn in the morning how to build a roof on a house. Then in the afternoon, we actually had to go out and we had to build a roof. And it wasn't a, oh Lee, that, look, that roof looks awesome, you get 75%. The, uh, the actual um, trainer would get up and he'd jump on the ridge of the roof, which is the, uh, the center bit going down the middle. He'd jump up and down on it. And if it stayed together, you passed. If it fell, you didn't, you didn't fail. You had to build it again until you got it right. And that's what college was for me. College was like, okay, I'm learning about the Bible. I'm learning about what Paul says to the Philippians. I'm learning about what Paul says to the Ephesians, whatever it may be. I'm learning all of this, but then I'm able to put it into practice immediately. And the one thing about Hillsong College that I want to encourage all of you uh, with is that we're not just theory. We're practical. We want to see to it that if you come in as a, as a married person, we want to make sure that your marriage is stronger at the end of 12 months than the day you walked in here. Um, we want to make sure that you don't just graduate with a certificate at the end of three years and go, yes, I did it. No, we want to make sure that throughout life, and life does throw, you know, uh, the Americans say a curveball. Uh, life does throw a curveball at you. The enemy will come up, come after you. And we want to make sure that when he comes and jumps up and down on the ridge of your life, that you still stay together. So, so we're not about giving you theory. We want to give you life principles that you can put into practice every day because everything that we're about is serving the church. We love the church. The one thing Jesus said he would do is build the church. That's all he said he would do, build the church, and he gave his life for it. And so everything about what, we, what we're about here at Hillsong College, and whether you're a part of a Hillsong church or whether you're part of the greater church somewhere in another nation, our goal is that you'll fall in love with Jesus and fall in love with his church, that you will serve Jesus and serve his church and be a part of what Jesus said that he would do, build the church and see his kingdom established here on the earth. And so that's everything we're about at Hillsong College. If you're sitting there going, I haven't been to college for years. I, man, I can't remember the last time I did an assignment. Don't worry about it. We've got your back. We're, we're gonna get through this together. The assignments are not that difficult. Just to let it, I passed. I passed, Sanger passed. So, uh, so there you go, everyone can pass. But I, uh, I also went on from, 
uh, doing what was known as the vocational courses back then, the real practical side of it, to then later doing degree, masters, and, uh, and currently in doctoral work, um, which if you ask me 10 years from now, hey, are you still in doctoral work? The answer will be yes. Uh, I'm, I'm believing the Lord will return before I finish that doctorate in Jesus' name. But, um, but I, uh, so I, yeah, I continued on doing the theory, but what I, what I also learned is that even going into master's programs and into doctoral work, yes, it's a lot more theoretical and philosophical, but sowing into church, turning up every week to church, serving the church, brings the best out of everything. And so, uh, so that's what we're about here at Hillsong College. It's an honor to have you here uh, all day. Get to know us. Don't be shy to ask any questions. Those of you online, don't be shy to ask any questions. I tell our students this all the time. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask. And so if we can help you out in any way, if we can help you go, okay, you want to be an astronaut? Let's show us how you're going to get there. We can build the foundation to, as Ken McDonald says, launch you launch you into all that God has for you. And so I believe taking one year of college to, to put the, get the foundations right for life, I believe it's something that every Christian should do at some point and, uh, and continue to help God do what He is calling you to, and that is grow the church, build the church, step out in faith and see all that He is, all that you can become in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. There's a little bit about Hillsong College. I'm going to get to know you a whole lot more throughout the day. Uh, I'm going to take a class later that some of you may go into. Uh, but for now, I'm going to hand over to Duncan Corby, who is our general manager, uh, who was our former academic dean and our former principal of the city and our former, you know what, this guy, this guy helped Noah build the ark. He is, he's been around that long. And so please welcome Duncan Corby. He's an absolute legend in our world. Here he is. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Well, good morning to you. And for those of you who are joining us online, whatever time of the day it is for you, Good morning, good afternoon, whatever. We're glad that you took the time to be uh, join us today. Um, the slide that we had up there before, can we just take that back up? This one. I just want to draw your attention to, uh, to, to this. Uh, Lee, I think, gave a really great uh, overview of what our college is really all about, training people for life, for leadership, for ministry for living the Christian life successfully, but also making a difference in the world. And what this screen is showing you is where is number of the places, organizations and churches and ministries around the world that our graduates are serving in and making a difference. So even though our courses are very much geared towards training people for local church ministry, the life and leadership skills that you will learn whilst you're studying with us, prepare you for life and leadership for God's purposes anywhere in the world. Uh, so, and, and our graduates, ten, no, probably close to 20,000 of them over the last 30 or so years are involved in all kinds of ministry and leadership all around the world. So I think that, that's pretty cool. I'm here particularly to talk with you about our courses. Uh, and so Lee, again, has given you a great uh, uh, overview of what we're about as a college. What are we trying to equip you to become and equip you to do? But the question then becomes, well, how does that actually work? What can I actually study? What are the courses that I can be involved in? So I want to take you through those. So if we can go to, go to the next slide. That wasn't the next slide I was expecting. <laughs> um, one of the things that Lee has already mentioned I'd like to also reiterate is that our courses are very much focused around hands-on ministry training. Uh, we have been very much focused as a college over the decades in making sure that our students are not just receiving a great theological education, but have skills put in their hands that enable them to do the job of Christian life, leadership and ministry. Uh, so we are very much, not, we don't just talk about practical ministry in theory. <laughs> you get to be involved in a college and a church environment where you can put into practice the things that you're learning in the classroom. Because we figure that we have succeeded if you can leave college and do the job of leadership and ministry, not just be able to talk about it eloquently. Uh, although being able to talk about it eloquently is actually helpful. <laughs> so uh, the focus of our training is about producing people who can do the job. So it's very much practical ministry and leadership training. Now let's talk about our courses uh, in, in some greater detail. 
We've got uh, a range of courses and I want to take them through you. First batch of our courses are our undergraduate courses. Our, our undergrads, uh, there are four of these and they are a Diploma of Ministry, an Associate's Degree in Ministry, a Bachelor of Ministry and a Bachelor of Theology. Let me take you through those because those can be a, a, a training or education pathway for you. Uh, and as you can also see on the screen here, you can do those courses either on our campus here in Sydney or online. Typically, if you're an on-campus student doing our Diploma of Ministry, that would be a one-year full-time course. The Associate Degree is a two-year course, and then the Bachelor of Ministry or Bachelor of Theology is typically a three-year full-time program. However, you can also study them part-time. Uh, and especially many of our online students are studying these courses online. And you may wonder, why would I choose one or other of those courses? Well, I think it's about what kind, what's your goal and how do you want to get there? Uh, many people say, I'm here to get a bachelor's degree, so I'm going to sign up for the, th the full three-year bachelor journey right from the outset. Others, and that's awesome, and you'll start your bachelor degree from day one. Others say, you know what? I want to take on a, a year at a time. I haven't studied for a while. I want to get my feet wet. I want to see what it's like. I want to give it a year and see what it does in my life. Well, then you can sign up for the Diploma of Ministry. And then after that, you can move into the Associate's Degree for your second year and then into the Bachelor's Degree and finish off with the Bachelor's Degree for your third year. Um, so you can choose, in a sense, Choose your own pathway. I was going to say choose your own adventure. It's not quite that broad. <laughs> but you can cultivate your pathway in your own education. What are these about? These programs are about combining uh, two what I think are really important qualities for those people who want to make a difference in church and a difference in the world. Those are practical skills, which you've already talked about, as well as a theological education because as you've probably noticed, our world is getting more and more complicated. It's moving rapidly, it changes quickly. And for those of us who are going to be in leadership and ministry and in pastoral roles, uh, the ability to keep up with what's going on in the world, to be able to think through the issues and to be able to present the Christian message re-communicated or reimagined or repackaged to the world in which we live is a really essential skill. To be able to do that, you need to be able to do things and you need to be able to think. And so our programs from diploma through to bachelor are going to give you both of those things. A great set of practical ministry skills and a great theological education so that you can really be sort of on the front foot in making a difference for Jesus in the world. Is that making sense? Um, for, our, for these programs, as you can also see, there are three focuses you can choose to sort of do put your focus on, hence they're called focuses, right? Um, you can choose worship music, which is what we at Hillsong are especially known for around the world. You can focus on worship music, you can focus on pastoral leadership, or you can also choose to focus on theology. You might say, well, those are very sort of, if you will, sort of uh, subject or topic kind of focuses. Well, you can also think about, think of them in terms of vocations, if you want to be someone who is leading worship, writing songs, uh, leading the people of God as they worship God through uh, the arts, through creativity, through music especially, well then our worship music focus is for you. If you want to be involved in pastoring people, leading people, growing people, winning people to Christ, then pastoral leadership is where you may want to be. If you want to be involved in, especially in teaching and, and thinking and maybe later on in academic work, you may want to go down the theology focus as well. So you can also craft those around the areas of passion and where you want to be heading in life, what kind of difference you want to make. Uh, where are the Australians in the room? Where are the Australians online? There you are. Um, the thing that you need to know is because uh, these courses, are, all of our courses are accredited here in Australia, which means for you as Australians, you are eligible for, to apply for fee help. It also means for those of you who are from overseas, you can also get a student visa to come and study here in Australia, which is going to be really important for you as well. So those are our undergraduate programs. Uh, they're especially crafted for people who are coming out of high school, but not only those who have come out of high school. Uh, but that's kind of where they start and they move towards completing a bachelor's degree. 
Then we have our postgraduate courses. So if you want to throw that slide up, these are, these are two master's degrees, a Master of Arts in Christian Studies and a Master's of Theology. Uh, these two, are, especially our Master of Arts, is available here on campus and also in our online program as well. The master's programs are people who already have a bachelor's degree. Anyone here who might already have a bachelor's degree in any field? Okay, awesome. Online? A whole bunch of you, that's fantastic. Um, so the Master of Arts program allows you to move into master's level study. This is master's level theological education with a practical ministry focus. Uh, if you already have a bachelor's degree in another discipline. I, for example, have got a Bachelor of Science degree, which means that if I wanted to, I could go into the Master of Arts program uh, and start a theological education at master's level from the get-go. Uh, if you already have a Bachelor of Theology, you can move into, or a Bachelor of Ministry, you can move into our Master's of Theology program as well. So those of you who've already got Bachelor's degrees, the Master's programs are there for you as well. Let me go to the, the next slide. Okay, this might be of particular interest to those of you who are, studied, who are from the United States. We have a campus in Orange County. Uh, it recently started up operations just a few weeks ago in the city of Irvine in Orange County and we're very excited about that. And our campus in America is, runs a bunch of vocational courses. These are very different from the standard American degree programs. They are vocationally oriented with the kind of heavy emphasis on practical skills, practical ministry training that our programs are known for. And you can also, so you can study there for one, two or three years, or you can also do the one year certificate for in ministry program in our online campus as well. Uh, so that's, that's really cool. And those focuses or the streams there are worship music or pastoral leadership. One of the questions we always get asked is after I've finished studying, what can I do with what I've got? Well. Like I showed you before, vocationally, the, the world is open to you. There's all sorts of career opportunities, church leadership and ministry opportunities that our graduates have taken up over the years. But it may be the case that you want to go on and do even further study. In that case, the studies that you do with Hillsong College uh, can transfer into studies at other universities. So for example, uh, this is what's on the screen at the moment, we have a number of partnership agreements with Christian universities around the world, a strong cluster of them in the United States, where after your studies at Hillsong College, you can transfer credit into programs at other institutions around the world, and you can even do the same. These are ones that we've set up to make it easy, but you can pretty well transfer our credits to any education institution around the world uh, so that you know that what the studies that you do here can continue to make either a vocational pathway or an educational pathway for you forward. Is that cool? Fantastic. So those are our courses. As you've already heard me mention though, all of our, our courses are delivered in campuses. And what I'd like to do now is give the microphone over to Chris Parks, who is the Executive Dean here for Hillsong College in Australia, uh, looking after our Sydney campuses. Uh, and he is going to introduce you to campus life and what you can expect being part of our student and college community. Cool. Chris, over to you. Oh, and also, by the way, uh, Chris this afternoon is going to graduate with his PhD. So we are celebrating that incredible achievement. So well done, Chris. Thank you, Duncan. Thanks, Dunk. Hi, everyone. Good to see you all. Welcome. Good to see everyone online as well. Am I looking at the... That's the camera right there. Um, as Duncan said, my name is Chris, and I look after our college here in Australia. And uh, like Lee Burns, I also passed college um, back in 2005. So um, I actually came 17 years ago in 05 to do one year of, of Hillsong College and I'm kind of still here, uh, which you know is an ongoing joke, but anyway. And um, now my wife and I attend our church just across the street there at our Hills campus with our four kids. And um, yeah, well and truly Australia is home for us, which is really cool. But as Duncan mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about our campus life and our campus experience. And um, we have three locations, Lee alluded to more locations um, evolving in the future, which is 
is exciting. But we have three locations where we do offer a college. The uh, first one, which Renee is gonna come up and talk about in a moment, is our online campus. And basically, you can study from anywhere at any time in our online campus, which is pretty cool. We also have a location in the United States of America. And so that actually is open to anybody who has American permanent residency. So for those of us joining, you joining online, if you are an American citizen or a permanent resident, then the campus in Orange County is an option for you. And then lastly, we have our campus here in Australia, which we've got a, a many guests here in the room as well. And uh, we actually have two locations in Sydney, Australia that you can study. We actually have a city campus, we call it the city campus, and the hills campus. So um, city campus, if you are coming to college here in Australia and you are much more of a, I wanna be close to the beach, I wanna be, I wanna see the coastline, I want some nice coffee, then the city campus might be good for you. Wesley's based in the city, Kathy is from the city, um, and so we've got our city campus. But if you're a bit more like me, who likes I'm saying, I actually do like the beach, that's not true. Um, but prefer the suburb life, then the Hills Campus, which is where you are right now, um, could be for you. And the great thing about Austra our Australia campus actually is as of this year, um, our Australian government has reopened our borders, praise the Lord, and is now granting student visas that you can come and study here from anywhere in the world, which is pretty cool. And just on that note, um, one of the incredible things about our college here in Australia is it's like a meeting of the UN. So so, which I've never been to, but I've been to Hillsong College, so I don't need to go to the United Nations. And actually, joining us today, um, both here um, in the room and also online, we have 39 different nationalities represented, which is amazing. And that is actually just a microcosm of our, our entire college world. It is an international college, it is a multicultural college, and so when you come to Hillsong College, you actually feel like you are um, meeting, or well, you are meeting people from many places in the world, so which is pretty cool. Um, I just want to talk just for a couple of moments on what campus life is like here in Australia. So I think we have some slides up here. Yep, very cool. Um, and there are kind of four dimensions or four uh, pillars to college life here in Australia. And also if you're interested in the USA, um, these apply to you as well because it is an on-campus learning experience. And the first thing I want to mention is the community. Our college community um, is a life transforming experience. To be in the room, in person, with each other, um, learning from each other, learning from people from all over the world, from different backgrounds, but then coming together. And like Duncan said, studying leadership, ministry, theology, worship music, you actually are part of an incredible community here on campus in Australia. Um, the second thing is classes. Everything is live and in person. We are actually standing right here in one of our lecture rooms. I mean, we're also gonna have our chapel service in here today. But right here in the epicenter, we call it, is actually a purpose-built facility for our college uh, classes. And then we actually have lecture rooms and we have studios. So for those of us who are here on campus, we're going to be doing a campus tour a bit later and actually take you to some of our facilities uh, where you get to see our studios, where we do songwriting, where we do recording, and uh, show you a few of our classrooms, which is pretty cool. The third thing is our chapel service, which happens on a Wednesday. And what day is it? Oh, it's Wednesday today. So we have our chapel service and a chapel service is right in the middle of the week and it is our point of celebration as a college where we all come together as a student body. We come around the word of God. We hear what God is doing in the lives of our students. We pray for each other. We, we minister. We minister to each other and we allow God to move and the Holy Spirit to do his thing. And so every week we gather for an hour. We worship. We come around the word and our chapel services are just, are, are just incredible atmospheres where you get to be with the rest of the student body and come around the word of God, which is pretty cool. And the last thing which Lee mentioned at the beginning was uh, church. So the, the last, um, I guess, pillar or dimension of college life here on campus is that everything happens in the as an immersive church life experience, which means that we are sitting in a classroom, we are learning uh, the Word of God, we're learning about ministry and leadership, and then we're taking that and we're outworking it in the life of church. So if you're not part of Hillsong Church and you're part of a local church, um, the same thing applies to you. Everything that we do in the classroom is meant to be outworked and walked out in the local church experience. And so it's not just learning information in the classroom, it is actually about applying that information in church life to equip you 
for ministry. The last thing I want to mention is here in Australia, you actually can study any of those focuses that Duncan mentioned. You can do worship music, which includes things like songwriting, singing, musicianship, band, workshops, you name it. We've got it here in Australia and you get to use our incredible facilities. We've also got our theology focus. So if you, your goal is to be a preacher or a teacher and you want to get into the Word of God, that could be a great focus for you. And lastly, our ministry and leadership focus. Whereas if you, called it, you feel called to church life, you feel called to ministry, if you're called to be a pastor, um, you can do any one of our ministry degrees here in Australia, which is pretty cool. So that in a nutshell is campus life here in Australia and over in the USA. And now I'm going to hand over to my colleague, the wonderful Dr. Renee Deng, who is our Executive Dean of our online college. So Renee, over to you. Hi guys. Hi to everyone online as well. Well, thank you, Chris, for the introduction. Um, my name is Renee, and I look after our online campus. So a bit of background about me. I'm actually, um, I never studied in college. It was my husband who did the whole, per whole, well, everything that we ever offered, basically. So he did three years vocational, and then he did his Master of Arts as well as Master of Theology. So that was my first connection with Hillsong College. Um, my background is actually in education. So I came from China in 2013 to Australia, and I studied my um, Master of Education in Western Sydney um, University, continued on, finished my um, doctorate, also in education. So I'm kind of seeing myself more as a educator, and I'm a, I, I, I think it will be, I think it will be fitting if I'm just introducing online experience to you from a bit of you know um, expertise um, because of my background. So um, any of you here had any experience um, with online study before? Oh, we got quite a few. And also online. I'm pretty sure the reason for some of you are watching this online is you are pretty familiar with you know, this kind of learning experience or, you know, being part of, especially after COVID, I guess. So, um, well, as you probably have already familiar with this, um, any online courses, um, obviously the first thing that usually attract people is because of its accessibility and a flexibility. So we really have, um, we have at the moment, last night I counted, there's 35 students from 35 different countries and areas around the world is currently, um, they're currently studying online with us. So basically, um, you know, with the online learning, you get to access to the learning content literally anywhere you are, anytime, you know, fitting into your busy schedule. And um, interestingly, a lot of our current students are actually um, working people and they're really busy. A lot of moms um, they're trying to take care of kids, um, you know, same time. Um, trying to do their study and their work at the same time. But also we've got people who are in ministry as well. Um, so I've actually just chatted with this student. Um, he's a pastor in the Philippines. And one of the tutorial he was attending, apparently he was zooming in from a somewhere in a resort in a mountain because he brought his whole church, well, his staff, to do a retreat and he's like, well, I've got class. I'm just gonna jump in from here <laughs> with, you know, get a bit of Wi-Fi from my phone. So, um, and also we've got students who are currently studying in university, but at the same time, they're like, I wanna be trained for ministry. Let me do it part-time. Let me take some courses, um, but at the same time, make sure that's actually fitting into my current um, study journey. And also we've got full-time students as well, because um, you know, for whatever reason, online is more suitable for them. Maybe it's because of your work schedule, maybe you're really fully packed with you know, other things in life. So online actually fitting into that. And it really, um, that's, um, I guess that's the most attractive thing to me. Um, but I think what's different um, in the online courses that we offer in Hillsong College is we actually specific purposefully designed to making sure that you um, are actually have the space 
to do um, you know the practical side because um, with um, like what Lee and also Duncan and Chris has alluded to, um, our course are actually very practical and that's our focus. And it's the same for online. Um, you get to choose all three focuses online as well. Um, but, but the beauty of um, doing that is wherever you are serving in your local church, we actually carved a space in our course to making sure that you're trained to serve your local churches. So the same experience there you're getting in, um, you know, on campus studying here, you're thinking, well, maybe I, you know, if I study here, I can be part of, you know, who's on church, which is amazing. Um, but if you study online, you actually get to serve the people in your community, in your local church. And we're making sure that's, that's the element we included in our, in our courses as well. Um, and... <laughs> A, sorry. <laughs> Last thing is we actually provide a really strong support um, structure in our online learning. You're not going to be on your own in this journey. You have access to all the course content in the front end and you can access it as many times as you want. And on top of that, we actually provide nine weeks of tutorial, which you have dedicated um, trainers to sort of walk um, walk alongside you, provide supports um, when, whenever you need it. So that's, I guess that's really the unique part. Um, not a lot of online education institutions are providing according to my knowledge. So um, if you're thinking of studying online for those especially watching the stream at the moment, um, have a chat, type in your questions. Um, if you, you know, we've got a really great team at the moment um, on the chats to communicate with you. So if you have any further questions and you can save that for later as well. We have a session dedicated to the Q&A as well. Um, and I believe I'm handing it over to Julia, who is our academic dean. Hey, Jules. Thanks, Renee. Hi. Thanks. Hi. Nice to see you all. Um, yeah, so basically coming forward, um, I'm going to get some students up here. I feel like I get the best part because I get to interview some of our students, which gives you a bit of an idea of how they feel what it's like to study with us at um, college. So could I just ask them to come up? That'd be great. Awesome. Just welcome them as they come, guys. And let's just go to the next slide. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so we have um, guys are all from, I think, different parts of our courses and different campuses. So we've got Angela. Um, Angela, I believe you're a part of our online campus. Yep. Camille, um, I believe you're in advanced diploma. Is that right? Third year. Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. At Hills At campus? Hills, yes. Awesome. Campus. And Judah, yep. and you are studying... Uh, worship, advanced uh, diploma as well at the Hills campus. Fantastic. Awesome. So guys, maybe we'll just, I'll, I'll ask you a couple of questions and individually. So Judah, do you want us to give us a bit of a background? So what are you studying? Um, what, what made you study it and why are you studying it? Amazing. So I'm studying worship uh, in a vet course. Um, I'm so from diploma? Brazil. Diploma? Diploma. So you're in the second? Sorry, advanced diploma. Advanced diploma, year. thank you. Yeah, you're finishing this year. semester. Yep. Um, what made me choose worship? I think worship was one of the things that brought me back to Jesus. And Beautiful. that's one of the things that speak a lot in my life. So choosing worship stream at Hillsong College was kind of like the easy and the most wise things to do at the time. Awesome. And you're from? Brazil. Brazil. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. And Camille, you are from? I'm from the States, the United States, awesome. Florida. Anyone? Florida, awesome. Yeah. How's family doing at the moment? Oh, they're great. We, it's hurricane season. We kind of, we get ready for it. But it's been good so far. Yeah, everyone's good. Safe. Okay, and what made you decide to study with us? Yes. Um, so it's been a dream for a while since I was 15. Um, but yeah, in 2020, though, is when I made the decision. And so, yeah, I just... 
knew this was a place that aligned a lot with what I am very passionate about and is like worship and people and obviously the Lord. And so um, I just felt that Hillsong College just offered exactly that. And so I can learn more about theology and also work it out um, with others. And yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And Angela, you're a part of our online campus. You're studying our, which program, our masters? Um, yes, so I, um, it's a bit random. So I, when I finished school, I did a Bachelor of Economics and then I went into advertising for 20 years. Wow. And uh, so I had, I didn't go to a Christian school. Um, I wasn't even a Christian. So it's like very, very... <laughs> Um, and um, I just want to talk up the Hills campus because I don't think Chris gave it enough credit. We have, we have Castle Towers, <laughs> which is the best shopping centre in the world. <laughs> we have the Edamoga pub, which is like a pub that looks like a pub, but it's a big pub. It's like a cartoon pub. Um, but, yeah, obviously that's just for eating lunch. You know, not for anything else, just for gathos and things. Yes, pubs in Australia um, are great for having a good counter meal. Yes, so, yeah, the Hills, can, it's not just suburban, you know. It's it's the mothership of Hillsong. Anyway, so just want to talk up the I Hills love that campus. you've given Hills a and shout out, even though you're a part of our online I, campus. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm both. Um, so, yeah, so I went to Hillsong, Com I've been part of this church now for about eight years. Okay. I became a Christian at 35. And um, yeah, basically I was at Hillsong Conference and I was really praying about what I should do. And I think, I don't know about anyone else who's of my age, but um, you always think, oh, should I do an MBA or should I do further study? And you yeah. sort of think, okay, maybe that's what I should do. But I thought, how boring. I don't want to do business administration. I couldn't think of anything worse. Um, and I don't want to bake cookies or do pottery. So what else can I do? And I thought, well, I'm actually attending a church I love. And, um, and I want to learn more about uh, Jesus. I want to learn more about Christianity because I never got brought up in a Christian school. So I don't know what I'm talking about. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to give it a go. And I just thought that I would do a night school or a diploma. But when I went to the, um, you know how they have those kiosks, the college kiosks? Yeah. Well, the girls and guys there um, said, we've done a bachelor's degree. So why don't you consider doing a master's? Now, Again, I know nothing about theology. I didn't know what theology was. I had to Google it and go, okay, it's actually learning about God. I'm just trying to say to people that don't worry. Like I think someone said it before, you're like anyone can do it. Honestly, if you want to learn more about God and about Jesus and about your relationship with your church and how you can serve Him yeah. in your own way, this is a great starting point. Yeah. Okay, so it has the history. It has the, you know, we've half of this church came to Hillsong College. So, um, you, you know, like all the staff and everything, half of them did. I don't know what the stats are. I'm sure Duncan knows that. But anyway, so I'm just saying, like, the proof is in the pudding, but also for me, it was about finding my calling and my purpose at age 40. Yeah. So um, that, that was a really long answer, but it was just to say to you that Masters isn't for people with caps, okay? Masters is just for people who want to go deeper and deeper and deeper into learning about God and to use your brain and also it will really um, help you in life, not in terms of just calling in direction as well. I love that. I love that. That's such yeah. a great answer. And, and even the, just the comment that you made on theology and some of the, you know, the words that when you're looking at the different subjects, whether it's theology or ecclesiology or pneumatology, you know, any of those things. And sometimes they're words and they just look really scary and you go, I'll just go the Bachelor of Ministry. Um, actually, you know what, once you get into it, none of them are actually that scary. Um, it's just breaking down a big word into something really usable, which I think is such a great thing that we do here, um, is breaking it down and understanding how to put it into practice and make it usable and you know applicable in everyday life which is awesome so Angela just on that and while we're talking about it how have you found the experience of studying online as well as working and family and that dynamic I was chatting to a student outside and um, I remember like the first step is the most petrifying thing 
So being here today or joining online, that's the first step. After that, it's easy. It's fine. Yeah. Like if you've got a laptop and you've got Wi-Fi, then you, that's a great start. Yeah. Um, but also, I remember referencing, okay? <laughs> I don't know if everyone remembers referencing back in like the early 2000s, but it was hard work. Now you have an automated program called Satiro and there is an <laughs> online video that you can watch. So referencing is fine. You also have amazing people like Renee Ding, shout out. Yes, wherever Renee. she is. Like, she is so smart and she's so good at helping you with research and understanding where to start. So, again, you've got um, one other thing. Sorry, I don't want to give a long answer. One other thing is um, it's really important to lean into your tutors. And I've had some amazing tutors over the years that have really helped me get started. Because when you start something like Old Testament, I freaked out, okay? Because I'm like... I have no idea how I'm going to study this for the next 10 weeks, right? But that's in your head, okay? But once you get started and you take it week by week and step by step, and I had um, Dr. Hayden Nelson, who was one of my lecturers for that. He was so incredible and he brought it to life. So, yeah, I just want to say don't be concerned about whether I can or can't do it because, first of all, you have God with you. So that's a good start. Um, but also you do have an amazing faculty of teachers and tutors that can help you along the yeah. way. That's so true. I, I actually remember that um, experience of starting back into study myself and actually felt like I sat there in my first tutorial looking like a deer in headlights. Like I so remember that experience and just going, what am I doing? I have no idea where to go. What is referencing? Now it's a part of Word. It's just so much easier. You know, what's a learning platform, all that stuff. But you're so right. And asking um, the people around you, ask your fellow students, ask your tutorial leaders, your trainers, any of those people, because everyone's so willing to help. So, I mean, how did you guys find that when you first came? Did you have that deer in headlights experience similar? Uh, for me, um, I think the language was the first barrier that I found uh, that I faced here at Hillsong College in 2020. But honestly, with every single trainer, every single core trainer that we have, that I have as well, they're also like graceful and always keen to help you and walking through the journey. Um, I think college for me personally was an experience that was literally stepping out of the comfort zone and being challenged every single week in a good way and now I see the fruits of that um, in my third year finishing this semester like see how much I've grown in faith and in like foundational with God and, and theology but at the same time like the quote that we have we believe in you more than you believe in yourself I see this coming alive in my life so for me it was like the key point of so the whole journey. Good. Yeah, yeah. Camille, do you have any defining moments that have happened for you in your oh. time here? Uh, yes, I have so many. It's so hard. <laughs> oh, m my context, my situation was so interesting as well um, when trying to get here. So in 2020, obviously we had a pandemic. And so with Australia, the borders are closed. And so I finally make this decision to go to um, Hillsong here in Australia, and then borders come down. I'm like, what is what is going on? Like God, like what? You, I feel like this is the next step. Trust him. I prayed. I was like, is there anything else? And then he's like, nope. Hillsong College. And then I just trusted and I decided to do it online. And in that time of being online, and that was like a year and a half of waiting um, to finally get here, um, I found such a great community of people. I think that was one of the biggest highlights for me, um, it, of people believing in you more than you believed in yourself. So when it came to even tutorials, like first year Camille was like very scared of asking questions, but then now third year Camille is like, I'm still kind of a little bit scared of asking questions, but I have <laughs> <laughs> a little scared. Um, but I, I know there's people around me who are cheering me on. They believe in me. There's this grace. There's this comfort. And um, honestly, it's from the, t uh, the lecturers, the this community here. Honestly, like everyone has been so great. And the times I wanted to give up and be like, no, I'm just going to go to Hillsong <laughs> and, um, in the United States. I uh, had friends, colleagues, I just had everyone being like, no, like, you got this, press on, next semester, next semester, and like, three years later, like, the Lord has been so faithful, and I'm here, and 
yeah, I think the biggest highlight has been just the community of people calling out the gold in you and really seeing the potential and really allow, really believing for you to step into all that God has for you. So I think I that's a that. big highlight. Oh, and we're so thankful that you're here. But what, what a, um, yeah, what a journey to go through 18 months in the lockdown and trying to get over here. But yeah. that's amazing. So for people who are considering coming to study with Hillsong College, what would you say to them? Yeah, um, trust God, honestly. Like, if you have that nudge, like, you can't go wrong with making this decision in the sense that you will get something. Um, even if you don't go into ministry, like, you will grab something for, like, the world. And, like, if you really love the Lord, like, the Lord is really going to show you something. And He has something specific in, for you. So I feel like with coming here, you can really just tap into that and see what else? What else is there for me? And um, even if it's not in ministry, just take the step. Like Angela said, like, that's the biggest, like, scariest step. But once you take that step, like, you have great people around you who are going to help you out. And the Lord loves you so much. So, like, just trust him, really. So good. Judy, do you have anything you want to say to anyone considering? Yeah, I just want to encourage you, uh, everybody outside Australia that's considering to come here. Um, if it's in a, like trusting God and he will open every single door. Mm -hmm. I think like financial can be a, a problem or even like visas happening, but we see here in college that uh, we, see, <laughs> <laughs> we see like visas being approved. We see God moving. We see financial provision happening. So put, yeah. put your wishes and your dreams to come here like yeah. before God and he will open the doors for you. Yeah. So don't give up. Don't get like sad or even frustrated with things are not happening things will happen in the time that he wants to happen yeah. he has a plan for you and just trust in him amazing well guys thanks so much for sharing your experience and yeah i hope if, if you've got any more questions you can grab these guys i'm sure afterwards in lunch break and um, myself or any of our trainers um we'd love to chat with you more so we'll hand back to wes to take us through the next part thanks guys That's amazing. Wow, I love hearing their stories, the testimonies. Reminds me of when I arrived eight years ago, 2014. Yes, I'm joined by my friend Zoe, everyone. I've met all my friends online already, but I haven't met you guys, so it's good to meet you guys. I'm Zoe, I'm part of the marketing team for college. Yeah, Zoe has been helping us out, hosting everyone that is online and joining us. <laughs> and uh, I'll give you guys a little bit in a bit just to rain down what's happening next. Yes. But before that, I wanted to just give a shout out to Pierre joining us from France. Let's go. You know, Boa from Nigeria. Yeah, let's give them a clap. Sa Boa from Boa. Spain. We've got um, Agni from Latvia, Joshua from Germany, Tizra from the Netherlands, let's go. let's go. Kia from the UK, Ewan from Guatemala. We also have Dia from Indonesia, and we have Lynn, who's already got accepted to January yes. 2023. That's amazing. So good. And last but not least, we also have Cheryl joining us from Newcastle. Let's go. You know? <laughs> Lee's from and Newcastle. Many, we many, love many, many, many others online. So in a bit, Zoe's going to tell us what's going to happen yes. online, but mm -hmm. here on campus. What are we doing now? We're going to take you guys to a campus tour. We're going to get those steps in for those of you that, you know, stretch have the those legs. watches, stretch a little bit. I'm going to show you guys around our facilities. I'll be happy to be your host. And then straight off the back of our campus tour, we're going to join our weekly student chapel. So I'm just going to preface for you. It's going to get rowdy here. You know, this auditorium will 100%. be full packed of students you know we do get a little bit crazy but join in you know this is the one day you get to experience the life uh student in a life experience day in the life, the life of, of, the of the student guys i'm esl <laughs> i'm still learning english you know <laughs> and then straight off the back of that we're gonna have lunch together and guess what it's on us yes, let's yes. Go. free subway we love the subway who loves subway for sure <laughs> And then right after lunch, you guys will get to choose between three different classes. So we have... Um, yeah, they had it on the before, screen for us just before. On the screen. You have the chance to sit in in three classes. One of them is, if the team could put um, back that screen, we're going to have theology, 
class with one of our lecturers, Ken McDonald. We're going to have also a look and act with our executive vice president, President Lee Burns. And we're also going to have music performance for all my worship people with Norm Let's Go, Katie, as well. If you love worship, Katie is one of our um, lecturers here from worship. You get to sit in one of each if you want to, or one of them if you want to, that right after lunch. I'll be there, I'll be hosting you guys, I'll let you know, hey guys, we're wrapping up lunch, let's all go to class together. And then straight off the back of that class, you sit in for one hour, you you take all your questions about the Bible, in one hour we'll make sure you get all the answers, you know, from everything. <laughs> and then after that, at 2 p.m., we join back together here in the Epi Foyer, just where we started. And then we're going to have uh, representatives of each course where you can take more of your specific questions, you know, things that you really want to ask, maybe the application process. I will be there as well with you guys. And then we have a surprise that you have to stay until the end to find out. Ooh. <laughs> Zoe, what's happening online? Tell us. Love it. All right. So for all of our online friends, we are also doing a campus tour You'll get to see my face once again. We've recorded a campus tour for you guys, which will play shortly. And then after the campus tour, we are going to be hearing a little bit more. You guys are going to be able to send in your Q&A questions for Renee and Chris and Monique, who you haven't met yet. Um, so get those questions ready, and we're going to have that in a moment. Amazing. <laughs> so all of you, my people, please join me in the foyer. Let's go. Let's get some walks, some steps in. I'll show you guys around. Zoe, all yes, of you, amazing. bye friends. If you're online, why don't you go grab a cup of water, a tea, a coffee, and we'll be playing the campus tour in a moment. Welcome to Hillsong College. My name is Zoe. And my name is Luis. And we're both students here at Hillsong College in the beautiful Sydney, Australia. And today, we're gonna be showing you what it's like to be a student here at Hillsong College. We're here at our Hills campus in the Hills district of Sydney. Not only is it the flagship location of Hillsong Church, but it's also the flagship location of Hillsong College. We're going to be showing you where classes happen, where chapel happens, where to get your morning coffee, where to study for those assignments, and what it's like to be a student here at our Hills campus. Let's do it. Well, we're just outside of the Epicenter building. The state-of-the-art facility was built in 2016, specifically with Hillsong College in mind. The Epicenter houses many of our classrooms, our lecture rooms, our auditoriums. It's also got a bunch of studio spaces and worship rehearsal spaces, and it's where a lot of the Hillsong staff offices are. So come with us and we'll show you around. All of our Hillsong College classes take place from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Monday to Friday. Smaller lectures, like tutorials, take place in a classroom like this one. Whereas our larger lectures take place in a lecture room or our epitheater. The Epicenter also houses many of our creative spaces available for our students to use. That's right, if you're taking a creative subject or serve in our creative team, you might spend time in one of our music rehearsal spaces like this one. Or in one of our professional TV and audio studios. Throughout the week, there's always something awesome happening in the Epitheater whether that's sisterhood, staff meetings, or some of our larger lectures. But every Wednesday, our student community gathers for chapel. Yeah, chapel is the highlight of the week for a student. We always say anything can happen and it probably will. We're here at our very first Hillsong Church building, The Hub. Since 1997, some pretty epic moments have happened here. 100%, the first Hillsong conferences, the first album recordings all happened in this very room. Today, the hub building is used for our Hillsong College offices, as well as many of the other Hillsong Church offices on campus. The Hub Auditorium is also used for some of our college lectures, as well as church events throughout the week and some of our college chapel services. The 
Coma Cafe is a great spot on campus to grab a coffee and catch up with people. Yeah, it's also a great place to study and do some group assessments. But if you're looking for a quiet spot to study, you can grab a coffee on the go and head up to the library. This is our college library. It's open Monday through Friday for our students to use. So you can find resources for your assignments or even just books from your favorite Christian authors. We also have computers and printers available to use to help you with your studies. The Convention Center, known as the CC, is the largest building and auditorium on campus. As the flagship campus of Hillsong Church, Sunday services are streamed all over the globe from this very room. At the end of every year, we get to celebrate our graduating students and put on the biggest party of the year, our Hillsong College graduation. It's been awesome to show you around our Hills campus today and give you a glimpse of what life could be like as a Hillsong College student. We'd love to see you on campus here in Sydney next semester, so make sure you get your application in and we'll see you soon. Well, if you are just joining us and you haven't been a part of Open Day yet and you're joining the live stream on YouTube, it is so good to have you here. My name is Zoe, I'm a part of the marketing team and we have also got with us Renee Deng, who is the Executive Dean of Online. We've got Chris Parks, who is the Executive Dean of Australia. And we have my friend Monique, who is an incredible lady, and she is a part of our ad admissions team, um, as well as doing some of the higher ed, behind the scenes stuff, she's awesome. Um, but essentially, we're gonna have this time so that you guys can ask some more specific Q&A questions. So maybe you were just a part of our info session, but there were maybe some things that came up and you had some more questions, wanted to go into more detail about it. Um, it would be awesome if you can type those questions into the chat, which I have got here on my screen. So I'll be looking out for your questions. Um, so whether it's about online study, whether it's about in-person study in Australia, if it's about admissions questions, no matter what it is, you can chuck those questions in the chat and with this amazing team, I will do my best to have those answered for you. So good, okay. I have a question for Monique because we've already met Chris and Renee. Yes, hi. But Monique, if you could tell us what your role is at yep. college and why you love being a part of the college staff team. Yeah, so good. Um, so I do a dual role. Um, I do two days in admissions um, with our wonderful team, uh, just helping process applications. Um, and then I do three days in higher education course administration. So that would look like um, creating syllabuses, chatting with subject heads, making sure all the content is ready for you guys to access. Um, I love this team. I actually did college for three years and so um, it's just such an honour to be like on the other side now, being able to see firsthand just all the hard work that's put into just making college happen. It's pretty amazing. That's so good. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, I feel like we didn't get a summarised answer from you guys before. If you could bottle down everything about your role in college and what you do, why do you love what you do? We'll start with Chris. Why do I love what I do? Um, the answer to that question is really easy for me. Um, I feel like I am a beneficiary of college, given that I went through college for um, one year, two years, three years, mm. four and a half years back in 2005, and um, it changed my life. And so there's nothing that I love greater than seeing everybody else go on a similar, but also unique journey, but a similar journey to me mm. where my life was completely turned around, transformed. I felt like I came out with a purpose, came out yeah. with um, skills um, and um, I, I guess a on the ground, a boots on the ground understanding of how to build church mm. and how to lead in church. And so um, for me, it was about my life was changed. And so I just love seeing that, mm. being able to share that and being part of that journey for others. So that's yeah. about as simple that's as awesome. it gets. Yeah, I love that. Renee? Um, I guess for me, like I, because I, I feel like I have the first, I'm really blessed to actually be able to see how college has impacted um, my husband's life um, and just see the transformation and the, really that growth coming out of it. And I consider myself being blessed because I can actually, you know, be here in the team to help seeing people's growth through what I do and through, you know, 
just really working alongside a group of really amazing、um, people.、Mm. And yeah, I, I, I just love it. And I feel like, because、um, it's always like, that's the question I feel like I get asked most.、Um, being someone who actually has a qualification that can, you know, I, Usually, it's like you can go work in university. Why are you working for college?、Mm. But for me, is I see just this the, there's life in here, yeah. Yeah. and、um, it's it's just something different. And then I, I, I love the, the, the aspects that I get to build into God's church,、mm. I get to see people's life changed.、Mm. And the most wonderful part is I actually get to see. Um, church leaders, you know, being, you know, they, being raised,、mm. people get discipled、um, and see them then reach out to others and to build their local church to reach out to others.、Mm. That's, the, uh, that's the exciting part for me.、Mm. I love that. I also, I, can、Let's、I add one more、jump、thing?、In. I'm so <laughs> sorry.、Um, as Renee was talking, I, I actually, this is going to sound quite basic, but I actually just love meeting the students.、Mm. Um, so, yes, seeing their journey and seeing the transformation, but just love, I love meeting new people. I love meeting, meeting students. Even meeting、uh, people today at Open Day has been great. Like, you know, the first person I met has flown in from Queensland, which yeah, is like、good. an hour and a half flight from here, just to be here for Open Day. And I just find people's stories so fascinating and interesting and、um, inspiring, actually.、Yeah. So, I love our students. 100%.、Yeah. So good. Okay, I'm going to check. How our questions are coming in. I hope there's lots of difficult questions、oh, for me. Oh, yeah, let's go. I, okay, I, but while they're still I coming、like、in, you can、Monique、keep sending them through. I feel like is ready to answer difficult questions. Okay, this is like the moment of open day for our online crew where they can like really get to know our team. So I have a question. I'm a bit throwing you under the bus here. I haven't, I haven't prepped them with this question. I have a question that I feel like really tells a lot about a person. Okay, that question is what did you have for breakfast? And what is your morning routine? So, you're getting ready for a day on staff at college. How do you prep for the day? I love it. Who wants to go first?、Um, I can go first. Let's go, Monique. Look,、um, I'm not a massive breakfast eater, if、Ooh. I'm really honest with you. Okay. Yeah. We can't be friends. I know. I don't know what it is, guys, but I just can't eat like super early in the morning. And so, a lot of the time, it'll look like a cup of coffee. And something from the bakery, maybe. Let's you know, a little snack. That's, you know, that's similar to me, to be honest.、Yeah. I just, there's this coffee company that I love, and their slogan is, We eat coffee for breakfast. And that's essentially me.、But、let's go, Chris. I love food. So I'm, I'm all about waking up and eating straight away.、Um, so, no, morning routine、um, usually it involves being woken up by my youngest son,、okay. who、um, he's five, he's just turned five. And he loves to be the first up in the morning. He usually wakes me up. And then the second that I'm up, all of my children all get up and follow me down the stairs. So when I just need just that few minutes to, I am a morning person, but I just need a few minutes just to come to consciousness.、Um, I'm being harassed for food. I put the coffee machine on, get the kids breakfast. This is around about six o'clock.、Um, take my wife a coffee. She's not a morning person, so I help her out. With that, get her day launched.、Um, and then, yeah, have a shower, read my Bible sometimes.、Um, I read my Bible all the time, but sometimes in the morning,、um, I have a coffee, I have granola, yogurt,、mm. honey, milk. That's me. So good. Do you say yogurt or yogurt?、Um, I can、This、say either. I could I be a chameleon,、um, but <laughs> yogurt now, but 17 years ago, I said yogurt yep, for sure. I can see that.、Yep. All right. Renee, tell us about your life. Oh, morning routine.、Uh, Well, I have a cat, so usually the first thing I got woke up by the cats. And,、um, and then I'll get my coffee. My husband usually g e t off to work really early. So I'm kind of just like, I'm there on my own, you know, doing my coffee, trying to wake up with the cat meowing at me and trying to feed her at the same time. And then I will go do my devotional and,、um, you know, just reading Bible. And、um, at the moment, I'm doing this. Um, efficient reading、um, plan with my Connect group. So I'll be like sending、cool. things early in the morning because I know I wouldn't be able to send anything to them. So we're like in the group chat. Nobody's responding, but I'm like just spamming people with text m e s s a g e early in the morning. So you're helping people start their day. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, I'm like really looking after them. And、um, breakfast, I had coffee, well, coffee, yeah. So I had two coffees this morning.、Um, and I also had. Yogurt and granola. 
There Amazing. you go. I feel like we know them on a deep 11 out, <laughs> right? So good. Okay, let's get to these questions. All right, all right. Okay. All right, question for Chris that I feel like you'll be able to answer. For our musician students mm -hmm. who come on campus in Sydney, would they need to bring their own equipment at all? Oh, that is a great question. Um, for musicians, yes. So um, it is very normal for um, students internationally to bring, you know, if they're a guitar player, to bring their guitar. Um, I think I came as a keyboard player, interest, a piano player, interesting enough, and I didn't bring a piano with me, um, but I was able to um, to um, organise lessons and training here, and then we do have equipment here on site as well for mm -hmm. um, for people to use. We've also got our practice rooms, which are equipped with drum kits and in keyboards and whatnot, but generally speaking, people do bring their own instruments. Yes, yeah. yes. So if it's smaller music musical things like a guitar you can probably bring it yourself but we do have practice rooms as you said that are fully kitted out with like drum kits and all of that that you guys can use and often as well like just to add um uh, i was thinking about the drum example mm. i also know students who come and then they start to build their own australian drum kit yes. and get yeah, the yeah. right cymbals the right drums like you know and you know i didn't know that um drumming was so sophisticated until i came to hillsong college and learned a lot of it from my drummer friends so yeah love it Okay, I have a question here from Joshua, which actually I can probably answer. He's asking, is it possible to start with online studies and move to in-person studies after one year, for example? And 100% you can, so I've actually done that. I used to be an on-campus student, even though I'm like here. I did um, my first kind of year of Bachelor of Theology on campus, going to classes every day. But now that I'm working full-time, I actually do it online. But you can also do it the opposite way around. So as Camille was saying in our student Q&A earlier, um, she started online from the USA and then moved to Sydney and started doing classes in person here. So um, depending on whether you're like anyone online can study part time in Australia. Once you come to Australia, if you are an overseas student, you must study full time. Um, but there is a lot of like leeway between starting online, coming in person, starting in person, going online part-time, full-time, um, yeah, so you can definitely change it up. You're not stuck in one place for the whole time. <laughs> okay. All right, okay, so another question that we can probably talk about from an online perspective and in person. So someone's asking about how we used to offer the creative streams and now they know that that has slightly changed. Can you guys go into a little bit more depth about, so in the info session we talked about the worship music stream and obviously there's a lot of other creative aspects to church life. Um, maybe if we start with Chris and then we can go into a bit more detail in online about how you can um, outwork creative. Yeah. Um, things through your course. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, uh, maybe start at, start at the um, the top level. Um, we have um, moved away from what we call streams into focuses, um, and the only reason we've done that is because now our um, our programs are are designed much more flexibly to include a whole variety of different units and subjects. And so what we've done, rather than um, having a stream that is hardwired into the course, it is a, a course that is generic, and then we package the course according to your particular focus or your particular passion. So the worship music stream is um, is one of them, but then we've also got the ministry and leadership and the theology stream. So that's the kind of the, the big picture, um, sort of high level answer. Um, in terms of more detail, um, where we, you know, in the past have run production courses or audio training or television training, you actually can still do that because in every one of our courses, and this is the same for online, um, we actually have our practicum component, which is um, on the ground ministry training. And that is actually part of our course. It's a, it's a subject that you do in your first year, second year, and third year. And that's where you can actually go and receive training, mentorship, and coaching in whatever area of church life is your passion or your 
um, where you where you want to lean into, and that could include being trained on the audio desk or the sound desk, being trained in the in the television and media world, but also in the worship music world. So I hope that answers so the question. Yeah. Okay. So then for Renee, for yes. online, if someone is taking a musical subject or they're taking the practicum subject and they want to do it in a musical area or a creative mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. in their local church, what does yeah. that kind of look like? So for online, um, I guess just some um, a bit different. Um, we obviously we still we, we have all the you know the, the different programs and the focus is that's offered same as on campus like what Chris has mentioned, Faculty Four, which you actually get to choose pastoral leadership or um, or, or the creative stream, and um, um, if you specifically looking like you know, looking at something that's very, very practical, that's one of the options. Um, but if not, if you're looking at other award, um, you still get to actually practice that through our um, practicum placements in your local churches. And I actually do encourage, especially for those who are studying online, making sure you're plugged into your local church, making sure you're actually served there. Because, um, I mean, like, otherwise, what's the purpose of really doing, you know, like just... The theoretical side of training if you don't really know how am I going to outwork that how am I going to actually helping you know building into my local community um, so like I would say don't let that opportunity go and if especially if you're really passionate about serving in a creative um, you know creative side of things specifically go and talk to your local pastors see like what kind of help do they need um, see what you can offer and then actually stay there stay in a community um and yeah and then um really taking the opportunity to you know contribute to that ta to that aspect as well love it so good okay another question is for people who maybe english is their second language um in terms of like entry requirements what do people need to do to be able to do that and then also maybe if you guys touch on a little bit more of the student support in terms of um, yeah ESL students maybe if you want to touch on yeah. entry requirements first yeah of course um, so there um, is a requirement to do an English test um, from most countries bar six um, so if you're from the USA Canada um, and a couple of others you might be exempt so um, just make sure you check um, so yeah an uh, English test uh, is required yeah great and then Renee do you want to touch on student support yeah sure um, as I have mentioned um, when we're talking about the campuses um, for online we actually have you know trainers who specifically dedicated to each of the subjects and they're the ones that um, you know, really facilitate and support you, walk along you. Um, but on top of that, we actually have a um, this specific thing called academic enhancement. So like actually having people who are there to support you with your learning. And if I can add, just as someone who is also ESL, I'm, I'm also English as foreign language, not even second language. Um, you realize when you study English, it's not just about, you know, I'm dealing with the language aspects, um, but specifically coming to the content side of learning, right? You're actually picking up a new language, whether you're English, you know, as your mother tongue, your native speaker, or you're someone who are studying English as a foreign language, you're learning a different way to, to communicate. You're picking up new language, new vocabulary. So kind of everyone's on the same page. And I will say, um, making sure you're actually plugging yourself into the community because a lot of time you realize the learning doesn't just help from sitting in a class, talking to my teacher. It actually help, comes most of the time from I walk alongside with my friend in my study mm. and for both on campus and online we have strong student community people who are really willing to help mm. and are wanting to see you know your friends succeed so making sure you actually um, get connected with people yeah so good okay I want to talk about a little bit about what does a normal week look like for classes, maybe Chris, if you take us through on campus first, and then we can talk about online and part-time kind of options. 
Yeah, so a full-time, uh, so as a, if a full, you're here as a full-time student, um, often that looks like classes on three days a week, sometimes three and a half, sometimes two and a half, depending on what days your classes fall on. Um, often that means um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays is a day of classes, of tutorials, of workshops, if you're in the worship music or the practical streams. Um, and then we have our chapel service, which is a midday on a Wednesday. Um, and then you often have uh, classes on a Thursday or a Friday. And so generally speaking, it is uh, three, three and a half days of classes, uh, which is great because it gives you some time during the week to work as well. Many of our students actually also hold down part-time jobs as well to pay for their tuition or their living expenses. That's very normal. Um, and of course, if you're on a student visa, you get student workers rights as well here in Australia. Um, and then weekends, obviously church life is a big focus. And so Sunday, you might be serving in one service and then attending another service or involved in one of our um, locations um, outside of our main hub locations as well just to get a bit more hands-on experience and so that would be a kind of a week in the life of Hillsong College there's plenty okay, that great. goes on like there's optional activities that you can join like in in our college life you can join a songwriting club or you can join a preachers guild etc etc so mm -hmm. there's a lot of optional additional activities as well but bare bones that's what it looks like about three yeah, days nice. a week just before we touch on online Monique, do you want to just explain the student visa and like how many hours a week a normal student can work outside of their their hours? Do you know off the top of your head? Um, I believe it's 20 hours a week um, yep. on a student visa. So you, yeah, there's definitely options for you to um, work part time while also studying here. So yeah, yeah, great. Cool. All right, and let's talk about online. What does a normal kind of structure look like in terms of when do I have to do my classes? Do I have to tune in online? What if it's the middle of the night? <laughs> I don't want to wake up at 2 a.m. <laughs> Tell us about that. Great, thank you. Um, so for online, you actually have access to all 12 weeks content from the top. So the moment you enroll, you've got everything you need to finish this whole subject. Um, and you really can watch them anytime and you can re-watch it um, if you, you know, you kind of just tune out halfway through and you're like, oh, what was that? You can always go back and watch it again. We do have live tutorials um, provided for students, but it's not saying, well, you have to get up middle of the night and to be part of the live tutorial because for online live tutorial is actually, um, it's, a, it's part of our support structure. So we're kind of just providing that as an additional support for the students. In saying that, all the live tutorials are actually recorded. And I think the, the beauty of studying online is also we kind of just making sure that flexibility is extended to your interaction with your tutor as well, mm -hmm. uh, which means you actually have someone who are there to answer your question. Just send them email, making sure you're connected with them, letting them know if you have any um, questions, um, you know, or you just want to clarify on something um, and mm. the tutors will always come back to you mm. and most of the time it's very common for students to reach out to us via email um, but sometimes the tutors are like yeah well let's have a some sort of chat groups it's up to the tutor um, so in saying that you basically are able to access all your content at a time where it works for you mm. um, throughout the whole semester anytime you can always go back and rewatch it yeah, so good. I found it so great, the flexibility at the moment when I'm studying online. Can watch as many lectures as I want, tune in for the tutorials, have all the access to all my assignments, ready to go. And our team are incredible at making sure they're connecting with you, always sending out emails if you need help if you're studying online. So they're awesome. I love our online team. Um, we have a few questions about enrollment dates and kind of does when does enrollment start? When can you start your study? Monique, do you want to take us through when does enrollment start throughout the year? When people, when can people apply and join and start studying on campus or online? Yeah, so um, generally when it comes to on campus, um, enrollment and orientation, um, I think for this upcoming uh, January intake is the 24th of January. Um, and then for our on campus students, we have intensives for two weeks. Um, and then our normal classes start. Um, and with online, I believe there's no intensives, so it would just be enrollment, orientation, and then into weekly classes from there. Um, yeah. Nice. So is that like January, February, and yep. then August, September? Yep. So we've got, for our on campus, we've got our January and July intakes, and then we've got our um, February and August intakes for online. 
Yeah, awesome. So good. Okay, we have a few more minutes before we're going to head into chapel. So we've got time for a few more questions. Um, Chris, do you want to talk about the difference between studying like worship in the USA vocational compared to the worship ministry, worship music focus in Australia and online? Yeah, sure. Um, the uh, okay, that's a great question. Um, the course is slightly different in terms of its structure. So in the USA, uh, we have. Um, um, the units are broken down into smaller components. So I'm trying to put this in the simplest way possible. Um, so there will be um, a collection of three units that we do as part of one class in the USA, for example. So in the music, per, in a music performance class, you will be assessed on your theory, uh, your theory, your technical skills and your performance. Whereas in Australia, the way it works is it's one big long class where everything gets assessed as one unit. So it's actually very similar, um, but it's just the way it's broken down and assessed is slightly different. Uh, yeah. But the main components are all the same. So you would cover band workshops. Um, if you do song, choose a songwriting class, we can, you do songwriting in the USA. You can do songwriting here in Australia as well. So it's similar. It's just the technical back end of it looks slightly different. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, last question. Obviously, Hillsong Church, we have some incredible people in our world who are very talented in music, very gifted teachers. Do we do students ever get to be taught like directly by people within our church that may not necessarily be trainers? And what does involvement in kind of church life, learning outside of classes look like? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's a really that's a really great question as well. Um, we obviously have here at our church some we would call them in education specialists, but people who are exceptionally gifted and talented in their particular crafts. And so it's very, very normal for us, especially actually in the creative area, mm. to bring in some of the experts and practitioners who are out there writing songs at the church in the, around the globe are singing. Yeah. Um, our worship leaders, our production crew, um, they come and they're very involved in many of our hands-on workshops and classes. Mm. And so, yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So good, okay. All right. I think if you have put any more questions in that chat, we will do our best to get our team to answer those questions. Um, but you can also email us at future.students um, at hillsong.com, which is where our incredible admissions team will be able to answer those questions for you as well. But we're about to head into chapel. There's actually a bunch of students in the room already getting ready to go. So we're pumped. We have got some incredible student hosts who are going to take over from me right now. We've got Camille and Ello, so I'm going to throw to them and we will see you soon after chapel. Hey guys. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome to chapel. If you're Woo! online or in person, <laughs> it's so good to have you guys here. Yes. We see people all around the world all, from all Argentina, world. Brazil, yes. England, Portugal. <laughs> That's amazing. United States! And, <laughs> and today is a very, yes. very special chapel because very what are we have in here? Because today, not only is Judah's birthday, <laughs> Thank you. but we have open day today. We have all the students from online to here in person who want to check out a day in the life here at Hillsong College. And so today is just very special because it's also... What? Chapel! Yo! <laughs> we and if you're watching that. online, we're gonna put here the QR code that yes. you can get our merch. You can get our merch. Beautiful shirts, beautiful hoodies, shirts, hoodies, like the full style. Hats. It's gonna be amazing. And we have a merch sale, so it's down on the QR link that's gonna pop up in the bottom, wherever this is at. I don't know where it's at. And Camille, yes. where's our merch? Where's our merch? Oh I don't my know. gosh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Yo! We just ask and you shall receive, okay? Look at this. Look at that. Look at this. This is really cool. Hillsong Bro, College. I want that. Hillsong like, College. I'm not giving it back. It's not mine. Giving, I know. This is really it's soft mine now. as well. <laughs> I feel like these are like just good to match with anything. This is oh. the back of it. Okay. Whoa. All right. With, I really like that one. Yeah, that, that one very, is more like, classical. very like university like vibes and stuff. Hi, Louise. You're going to see some people coming. Oh, Louise, come in. Louise, come here. Come on. Come here. Say come hi on, to face of college. everybody. <laughs> Tell us your name, where you're from, yeah. and what you like. What is what the highlight for college yeah, in your three years here? Yeah, what do you Three love? years of college. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Luis. I'm a third year student here Ooh. at college. Yeah. Let's go with the king over here, Judah. Mm. Uh, highlight, bro. That's yeah, what's a highlight? That's a great question. Yeah. You know, it's been such a great journey. But I think that my highlight's the people. 
Yes. The people, honestly. The I people? Mean, you, you get to meet people from every single country here. It you is know? like what it, Chris Park said. It's the like the UN, like the United Nations <laughs> gather here together. Literally. You if know? you've ever wanted to travel the world, you don't have to. You don't have oh, yeah, to. You, you just got to come on campus. Just come on campus. And meet the people. And then one day the you world. can have Mexican food. Yeah. And for dinner, Amen. you'll have Brazilian barbecue. Brazilian, Brazilian barbecue. barbecue. And then for your midnight snack, you'll have like curry. Have some <laughs> curry. Yeah, literally. That's really dangerous at midnight. <laughs> That's but the beautiful thing about college. It's really yummy. Yes, That's amazing. That's amazing. And yeah, yeah, our college is like more than yeah. 40 nations together. More than, I think it was 60 at one point. 60. Yeah, let's see what's going on on the chat. What is happening? Hello, oh, Louis. Someone hey, said hello. Sarah. Hi, Sarah Roberts. You know, Sher Sarah, Sarah Kaiser is an hey. absolute legend. She serves with online church. Really? She's part of my team. Come oh on. My gosh. Shout out. Oh my hey, Matt, gosh. how are you, bro? Guys. So, guys, keep putting in the chat your keep. favorite emoji. Put yes. Where are you from? Yes. And How's the, the day is going for yes. you? So like we said, it's open day. So if you're interested and you're like, okay, what is open day? There's going to be some links in the bottom, some QR codes, where they're going to give you more information on what today holds. So if you are online and you want to study online, we actually, after service, there's going to be a link that you can tune into, you can click, and it'll show you what we have in store for the rest of the day. Also, if you're planning to come here in person yeah. uh, on campus, Stay on the YouTube link. We got a little bit more information for you. But all that information is going to be found here. Yeah, yeah. and after chapel, we're going to have an amazing day here. Amazing day. I heard that people what are going to can choose, like, the lectures they want to do yes. online on your YouTube. You yes. guys are going to have a special moment as well that yeah. I heard that's going to be amazing. Amazing. Right? I think it's going to be so good. So I did online. Judah, you did a little bit of online. And it's a little bit different, but I feel like community-wise. It's the best. It's still the same. It's yeah. like it's still engaging. It's still so much fun. You get all that you want. Yeah. Um, what? Okay, from lockdown, online days, what was one of your favorite parts? Oh, my gosh. My favorite parts was... In class with my pajamas. Pajama. I think so bottom you can do part it pajama, <laughs> top part like a nice shirt. Nice shirt. Yeah. You look but presentable. you know what's funny? <laughs> I remember when you came here from online to in person. Yes. And she arrived here knowing everybody. Oh my God! I did not know everyone. That and is then not we true. were just like, "Hi, nice to meet you." And she was like, "Oh, I already know you." Oh my god. Because gosh. guess what? <laughs> <laughs> you that's going to do college online, you're still part of our community yeah. and you're going to be part of everything that we mm -hmm. do. Exactly. Right? You get to be involved in everything so you'll know who, who's who. You'll yeah. get to make friends online and then it's really cool when you do come in person and meet them in person. They're just, they're even better. Like, 100%. You know? But And... What? Our chapel today yes. is going to be so special. Oh, it's going to be so special. So if you're tuning in um, from all over the world, we are starting chapel very, very soon. It's going to be so special. Um, we have a really cool item happening. Yeah. We have, have some dance. We with have some dancing hairs happening. And all the things. Yeah. You can see we're dancers as well. But we have, who else are we? Who's preaching? I heard someone very, very, very dear to us. We love yeah. and respect is preaching. Do you, do you want to kind of do a I'd, personification of, uh, of him? Like a... A description of him? Yeah. Okay, he... Oh, okay, he just, like, not too long ago, like, gave his bio. And I'm That's trying true. to remember. He's from Newcastle. He started in 19-something. Um, he became the dean, the dean, yeah. in 2003. And then in 2012, 11, something like that, mm -hmm. he became the executive v vice principal? Yes. President. Pre president. Principal. Prince. Vice president. president of Hillsong College, our very own Lee Burns. Yeah. We oh, are so was excited. A, you was remember that, really, that? Was that really good? That was really good. That was good. very really good. On, that was Lee's an amazing leader for us, and yeah. we love him dearly. He's always bring fire to this chapel, always have something yeah. very powerful to say, yeah. something that the Holy Spirit speaks like, with him and through him. Yeah. So... Just get expectant. Yeah, come Just expectant. Just stir up your faith. There's someone here from Orlando. Oh, my gosh. It's actually my dad. My dad. Oh, and your dad is on the yes. line. Hi, dad. How's it going? Love you. Miss you. We Hi, love you, Orlando. Ida. We love America. Americans. Love America. We love you. Yes. We're proud. Uh, so right now, guys, we're right going to have, we're having here behind you us. You can see kind of behind a us. A prayer meeting. Yes. Because one thing that's important for us yeah. is Jesus yes. and prayer. Yes, it right? is. Yeah. So every single day here in chapel, when you become like when you come here or even online, yes. you're gonna be parting of our prayer meeting yes. where we surrender everything to God and, yeah. and 
And say, God, this is for you. Yes. This is our worship for you. Yes. Holy Spirit, move in this place. Yes. Because honestly, yeah. we see supernatural um, things. Supernatural things. Place. Yeah, I think it's so cool to see that college, like, it's all fun and like amazing, but. I think another aspect, a very important aspect, is that we are so hungry for a move of God in this place. And so, with that being said, there, everyone in the room right now is praying in groups, believing and coming expecting for chapel and what's going to happen. And we're really believing for the people who are joining here. God, like, really, there's something so special for you guys. If you're wondering what the next step is. Um, we're believing that God's going to give you your answer today. And if you yeah. have any prayer requests, please put on the chat. We're going to pray yes. for you right now. Yes. And we, as a college body, we as the body of Christ, we believe together. We pray mm. together. Yes, So we do. put here, if you have, like, you need wisdom to what to do in your next steps, yes. if you need your visa, if you need clarification from God, if yes. you need anything, just put on the chat. We're going to be praying for you. Yes. But... Keep yeah. putting on the chat, and we're going to pray. Yes, we're going to pray. Do you want to pray? I want to pray. Let's pray. So let's pray together. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, thank mm -hmm. you so much, Father, that we can be together here yes, in God. person and online. Yes. We are one body. That's, it's just a screen between yeah. us, Father, but your Holy Spirit will be everywhere. Yeah. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you're going to be visiting every single person, and you're going to put in their heart, Jesus, what is your will for their lives. Yes, Jesus. We pray, Father, that every single one of us will be in the center of your will. Yes. We surrender all to you, Jesus. Yes. You know every single person's heart. You know their dreams. You know their desires. So we pray, Holy Spirit, that you're going to visit them. Mm -hmm. You're going to speak to them. And you're going to comfort them. Yes. That's what we pray. In the name of we Jesus. We offer you this chapel, Holy Spirit. Yes. We believe that you're going to move. We believe that you're here today with us. Mm -hmm. So just do it. Yes. Happy we way. love you. We worship you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Guys, right. so in a few moments, our chapel is going to be starting. Yes. Stand up where you are. Stand up. Get ready get to ready show stretch. some moves. Get ready and for this item, guys. It's going to be insane. Yeah. But we cannot wait for you to join in. Amen. Chapel. Love you guys. Love you guys. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. And your day starts now. Your one day. Open day. <laughs> open day. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> that was good. Cool.
to win. I got a brand new identity. I died to myself and he lives in me. Come on! Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm pure, I'm clean. I'm not who I used to be. I'm a brand new nature. I'm a new creation. I can protect with the spirit. No way is it light and I'm reading. Give it on fire for Jesus. My heart is on fire for Jesus. I'm not who I used to be. Cause your love, cause your love's got a hold of me. I'm a believer in the power of Jesus. I'm a believer. Come on. I'm not who I used to be. Cause your love, cause your love's got a hold of me. I'm a believer in the power of Jesus. Yeah. 
to praise the name of Jesus. Amen, college. If you're joining us online, we praise one name. Amen. Amen. It's open day. We have many friends visiting us today, and we're about to sing a song that's new in our house, proclaiming how great our God is, that all glory goes to God in the church and on the earth. So come on, why don't you sing with us today? There is one, there is one who is greater, nothing else compares, he holds all power, he holds it all, in the earth and the heavens, does anyone
Lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Lift up his name, college. Lift up his name, Jesus. Jesus, what a name. 
what a name. And I love the song we were just singing about God's faithfulness. And it made me think of the call and response that God is good. Oh, we're gonna have to do that again. We're gonna have to do that again. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen, amen. Yes, He is. Welcome back from break, Hillsong College. The very first praise report in my hand was, we're back from break. How good is that? And you know what? We have to give a huge round of applause to every guest we have here for our open day. So we have over 100 and 80 guests for Open Day. First Open Day in three years. We've got at least 40 here in the room and then 130, 140 online as well. So why don't we welcome all of our online guests for Open Day. You know what, college, it is so good to be back. Anna, are you pumped to be back? You're so happy. Shelby, are you happy to be back? Yes, it's so good to be back. All right, well, um, let me just read off a couple of the things that God is doing in our community. Other than bringing us back from break, we've praised for that. Uh, we've got a good doctor's report here um, from Johnny. Mum's cancer hasn't spread and she is being prioritised for surgery. Johnny, I saw you earlier, but we're so thankful to God for His faithfulness in you and your family's life. Um, oh, this is good. We have a granted visa. Thankful that my sister's visa has been approved and she's coming for your graduation. Oh, okay, this is double in a day. Praise report right here. And in brackets, finally paid for all my tuition. How good is that? Um, we're thankful for our open day guests. You know what, we have um, guests who have flown in from Queensland to be here for open day and from Texas to be here for open day and from Michigan in the United States to be here for open day. And I also met this morning um, a, a gentleman named Joseph, him and his wife have relocated to um, Sydney from Western Australia because they felt called of God to be part of Hillsong College next year. So that's incredible step of faith. So Joseph, wherever you are, it's great to have you here as well. You know, these are all examples of God being faithful in our lives, but we're also going to stand for a moment in faith with our community to believe God to continue to be faithful in the lives of His people. So I've asked Megan, part of our tutorial. Megan, come up. Hello, Megan. Um, Megan is from Wales. Um, and you actually joined us this January, uh, first intake after the borders open for two and a half years. So how cool is that? Look, Megan, <laughs> amazing. I've asked Megan actually to, uh, to help lead us in prayer this morning for the needs in our college community. Do you have a microphone? Are you gonna use my microphone? That's okay. Um, so we have prayer for uh, someone believing God, praying for healing, for complete healing of my foot, a good report from the doctor. Um, we've got that. Um, thank you. Um, we're, we are believing God. Now, you'd understand this. Imagine if you lost all of your luggage at the airport. Can you imagine that? We're believing for lost luggage to be returned in Jesus' name, and we're going to believe that with you. Um, um, parents' work needs for God's grace and wisdom, successful surgery. So, Megan, why don't you lead us all in prayer? Yeah, of course. Um, I just wanted to read like a quick verse. Um, it does say in Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for what He has done. Today, college, I encourage you to lift up all your needs to Him. I encourage you to just hand it all over because He's already paid the price for us. So let's, um, yeah, let's, let's, I encourage you all to pray with me and let's lift this all up to God right now. God, I thank you for who you are and I thank you that you are God who moves mountains. You make things that seem impossible possible, Lord. And God, I just pray that you be with the college student body right now, Lord Jesus, as whatever they're going through, Lord, I pray that you will fix the needs that the, the house has, Lord Jesus, and I pray that you will just heal um, those who need healing right now, Lord Jesus. You'll be with um, the surgery that is going on, God. I pray that it will be successful, Lord Jesus. I pray for the people who have lost 
their luggage, Lord. I know that you will make a way for it to come back to them, God Jesus. And I just pray now, Lord Jesus, that you just be with every single need in the house right now, Lord, that um, your blessing will pour out upon everyone. And God, I pray for open day. I pray that it will be a success. I pray that people have the call for um, college in their lives right now, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will make a way for them, whether that be through visas, whether that be through financial difficulties, Lord, you will make a way. In your name, Father, I pray. Amen. 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 All right, why don't we thank the worship team for Dave Ware and for Katie and for our choir. Who here, this is a dangerous question for me to ask and then I should stop myself right now, but who here loves a choir? I love a choir. I'll leave it at that. We love a good choir. Um, all right, why don't you turn around, give your neighbour a fist, fist pump or a high five and ask them what they had for breakfast. Okay, why don't we remain upstanding? Everyone online, I hope you're enjoying our open day. So we have one of our favourite moments in chapel. We get to hear from one of our own. So all the way from our city campus, we have bringing out of the boat, Rebecca Lewis. So give her a round of applause as she comes. Okay, how many of us know that the Christian life is full of paradox? So there's the paradox of God's sovereignty and our free will, the paradox of the now and the not yet of the kingdom. Yeah, you can take your seats. Forgot to do that. <laughs> well, today I'm going to be talking about the paradox of presence. So our theme this semester is Spirit Speak. And I think it's pretty safe to say that the presence of the Holy Spirit and the speaking of the Holy Spirit are pretty connected. I reckon that's a safe bet, hey? So paradox, when we're talking about paradox, we're talking about two seemingly opposing truths that are held in tension with one another. So the paradox of presence, here's our first thought. The Holy Spirit is always present and always speaking. He's always present. The Holy Spirit is in us. He is with us. He is our seal, our deposit, our inheritance. He's always present. And when Jesus in John 16 is promising the Holy Spirit to his disciples, he promises, he says, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and lead and guide you into all truth. Holy Spirit is always speaking. I have this folder of notes on my phone. It's called, I'm listening. So cute, so cheesy, I know. And I write everything down. If I'm in conversation with someone like David Ware, who's done the journey a lot longer than I have, there's wisdom to be found there. And I write something down if it stands out to me. If Chris Parks is lecturing and something stands out to me more than just the notes, which often happens, I write it down. <laughs> I write it down. I write everything down because it helps me so that I can tune my ears to the ways that the Holy Spirit is speaking because he is always speaking. But here's where the paradox is found is that we're not always great at listening. At least I know I'm not. And so on the other side of this paradox, the tension is that we need to intentionally get ourselves into the presence of God so that we can hear him speak. Jesus was consistently, constantly going off on his own, alone to be with the Father. He was away from the disciples so that he could spend time in the Father's presence, so he could hear from the Father, so that he could hear God speak. When you have something important that you want to say to someone, you don't just send them a text. No, you actually set a time and a place, intentional time, intentional carved out space so that you can speak to that person face to face in their presence. And it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. He is kind and he is faithful and he is gracious and he wants to speak. And so we find ourselves, college, in this paradox. The Holy Spirit is always present. He is always speaking, and he wants to speak to you. So when was the last time you made room? Because he is always speaking. Always. Are you listening? Thank you.
That was incredible. Incredible. Well done. That was excellent. Um, one of the great things to take away from that is even if you're in my lecture, despite what I'm saying, the Lord is still going to speak to you, which is a huge praise report right there. But uh, anyway, that was wonderful. And uh, we're going to continue with the Word this morning. And we have none other than our leader, the Executive Vice President of Hillsong College, bringing the Word. So why don't you welcome Lee Burns to the platform. Oh. Amen. What are you doing? Behave yourselves. All right, be seated, please. Behave yourselves. We've got new people here. Man, that was absolutely phenomenal. Rebecca, I was, I was under conviction just at the fact that she listens to Chris. I was, uh, I was like, dang, I even struggle there sometimes. <laughs> Chris, Chris, by the way, today is a big deal. Chris actually graduates his doctorate this afternoon. Uh, isn't that? I, uh, well done. Well done. I'm so proud of you. So envious of you. He, he builds a house, has four kids, builds a college and does a doctorate. All within four years. Exactly, wow, exactly, gosh. And so, congratulations, Chris, You're, uh, you are next level. The result of him doing his doctorate is he talks to me in, in, in words with like three syllables. And I spend more time on the th thesaurus <laughs> than I do actually listening to him. And so I basically say to him, go tell Duncan, because Duncan knows how to talk to Lee. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, amen. God is so good to us. Amen. 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 A huge welcome to uh, all of our potential students for 2023. Those of you here in the room, those of you there online, and, uh, and our prayer is that the Lord will speak to you over the next few moments and uh, not only speak to you, but also do all the next steps, the provision and everything that is necessary for that to happen. We've been doing a theme over this semester called Spirit Speak. I've been looking at different ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, uh, that the Holy Spirit engages with us. I love that thought of God in the paradox, always the way that not necessarily two truths opposing each other, but complementing one another. And, and that we, we, we can often not get our heads around. And the uh, and best way to explain it is often if you're in an aeroplane, you're sitting in 24 degrees. Outside, it's minus 24 degrees. Or some of you in winter, Michigan, you can be sitting inside 24 degrees and outside minus 24 degrees. Both are true, both coexisting at the same time, both complementing what God is doing on the earth. Same thing when it comes to what we believe. Sometimes people can believe one thing, extreme this side. Some people can believe something else, extreme the other side. And they end up having an argument over who's right. The way I often see it is, it's two truths coexisting at the same time for the purpose of building his kingdom here on earth. I want to talk to you about the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Because I'm a Pentecostal. I'm a Pentecostal. I do speak in other tongues. I thank God for it. And I think he thanks me for it because there are a lot of times I have no idea how to pray, what to pray. All I know is that I can only pray. I think God is pumped that I don't use English, my known language, because sometimes I'm frustrated and I just break out into tongues and all of a sudden it kind of eases the frustration to a point that you can then listen. But then there's others in the room with different gifts. We all have different gifts. 
If you want a title for today's message, it's called The Gifts of the Spirit, Tools for Building God's House. Tools for Building God's House. As you know, I'm a carpenter. What'd you say? Yeah, the chip is. Matt? Is it Matt? Eddie, exactly. I think that's what I said. It's all right. It's all right. I called him Matt last time as well. I'm just waiting for him to get the word of the Lord that your real name is Matt. It takes time. It takes time. He's from Victoria. Um, (laughs) But Eddie gave me a word one time. Just come up and he just said, Lee, I've got this word for you. You're a carpenter. And you look down the, the line of a piece of timber and it's like this. And he said, straight away, you know, there's something wrong with the timber, but as a carpenter, you also know how to fix it. And he said, I feel like that's a word for what you do in ministry. Well, that afternoon, I was going into a meeting where I had to sort out a problem. Just one. <laughs> where I looked down the line of this situation and went, hang on, that's not right. And prayed, God, give me the wisdom. Give me the know-how to bring that back in the line. I went into the meeting and did that. If you were to ask me which gift did I operate in the meeting, I have no idea. I remember being a young carpenter, first year apprentice, and getting to knock up my first cupboard and having to put the cupboard end on the cupboard shelf and I would sit there with the nail gun and... And the tradesman would sit there watching to make sure that the nails didn't come out of either the outside or the inside of the cupboard. Well, by the end of my four years in the apprenticeship, I was turn it upside down. No problem at all. Speed. A few weeks ago, I was driving around Newcastle, which is where I'm from, and I was showing Cherie all the different houses in the area that I'd had a part of doing up or rebuilding. And Shireen never once said to me, which tool did you use? She just looked at the end result and went, wow, incredible. I know. I know, it's probably been knocked down and redone since my day, but I claimed it anyway. (laughs) You know, sometimes I believe that we focus so much on the gift that we forget to look back and go, what was the gift for? What did it build? We focus so much here that we miss here. Do you know when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, I believe that we should operate in the gifts of the Spirit without a doubt. And I'm going to go through nine of them in a moment with you. I believe that we should operate in the gifts of the Spirit, but we should understand that the gift is not for me, it's for the house. It's for building the house. On the weekend, I met this couple uh, in church. And uh, for the, I don't don't know who was in church and who wasn't on the weekend. It was like a kid's takeover morning. And uh, and it was just absolutely exceptional. Um, And then we had youth takeover at night and it was absolutely phenomenal. I love seeing the next generation come through because I sit there going, the house is strong. I'm intimidated by how easily the younger generation just get up and talk publicly. My son did an offering on the week. I've never seen him speak publicly. He gets up and does an offering. Now I talked to him about it the day before. He's like, Dad, I'm so nervous. I don't know how to string this thing together. And I'm like, you'll be fine. Said your number one goal, don't worry about the message. As long as you pray well at the end, they'll forget the message. (laughs) Just focus on the prayer. I've learned that. I know that. And so he's telling me he's so nervous. And then Cass introduces him and he just jumps up on the platform, goes for it. And I'm sitting there like, oh my God, I got tears rolling down my eyes because I'm thinking if, that, if that's what nerves looks like, man, I'd give my left leg for that. God, I remember my first ever offering. I got up and I'm talking away and my cheek starts twitching like this. Right? And I'm in front of the church and I'm thinking, God, is this a nerve or can they see this? And you're sitting there like this going, God, stop, stop. 
Are you try- I'm trying to explain Philippians 4 while my eye is, I don't know what the heck was going on. My heart was doing the same thing and, and I'm fumbling over words and I-, I just did a strong prayer at the end. <laughs> and I got off and I felt God say, good prayer. <laughs> Man, I don't know how they did it. Then at night, uh, Lexi, who came through college years ago, she just gets up, she just talks to the church and it's just like gold after gold after gold, just tweetable line after tweet. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. How incredible is the church? How amazing to see the next generation coming through so strong. Evan down here, look at you, Evan. Coldest day, coldest day in Sydney and you wear shorts. That's a gift right there. To not feel the cold. Evan gets up here to MC one time. Ends up operating in the gift of healing. Ends up prophesying over people. Probably didn't know what he was doing, what gifts he was doing. But it didn't matter. He was building the body of Christ. So when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, sometimes we can focus so much on did we get it right or didn't we, that we forget who we're actually talking to and what God is doing to strengthen them. And I want to encourage each and every one of you that the Holy Spirit gives us gifts, not so that we can get titles, but so that we can build the body of Christ. When you said, I love the church, I want to build the church, Jesus strapped a tool belt on you and said, go build. And sometimes you'll shoot a nail out. That's fine. You can always knock it back and cover it up. That's fine. One time I was knocking up certain parts of a, uh, a kitchen. And I, uh, the, the boss walked in with the couple who were, whose kitchen I was building. And he comes in just as I shoot the nail. And I, I kind of looked up and shot and boom, straight up through my thumb. So my thumb is stuck to the drawer. And the, they're bringing the, the couple across and I'm putting my hand over this nail that is come up through and bent over. And I remember just going white, feeling so sick. I was only just a new Christian at the time, but I, I saw Moses and Elijah <laughs> kind, of, kind of appear to me. And the boss kind of walks over and I've got my hand over it. And the boss is looking at me like, what is wrong with you? And I'm looking back at him like, get these people out of here. And he kind of saw that I had my hand over and knew exactly what was going on. So he stayed there and talked a whole lot longer. (laughs) Then he ended up taking them around the back of the pantry. Who wants to see the back of a pantry? He knew what I needed to do. So he took them around the back of the pantry to show them the kind of backs that we put on kitchens. And while he was gone, I just got my fingers down and prized my thumb off it. Oh, you guys are such wusses. Oh my gosh. And you want to be ministers. (laughs) And I ran ran to the bathroom, put paper towel around it, put masking tape around it, went back to work. That's how it works. Gift of healing right there. But when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, listen to this, listen to this. In 1 Corinthians 12, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed or ignorant or immature. You know that you were uh, once pagans and you were enticed and, you know, we we were all, you were, come on, we've all got that testimony. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be accursed. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Notice that. Notice that, that you even need strengthening in working out who is Lord. The Holy Spirit does that. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. Notice, diversity, unity. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. There are a variety of activities, but the same God, who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Notice that, the common good, that is the church. That is the common good. 
To one is given through the Spirit, uh, the utterance of wisdom to another, knowledge to another, uh, from the same Spirit, another uh, faith, according to the same Spirit, gifts of healing, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. So in here in Corinthians, we've got nine gifts, but there are many others as well when it comes to the Spirit. For example, When we first started at the beginning of the semester, we looked at Paul who had a vision and a dream and it was interpreted that this is what God was saying. So they went over into Europe and preached the gospel as a result. Well, visions and dreams are not here in this this passage of scripture, but the spirit gives people uh, people dreams and visions, not me. Not me. I don't remember dreams, right? If God wants to speak to me, it's not through a dream. It's always or more often than not through Bible or through somebody. But God does speak to people that way. And I thank God for people that can do that. But in this passage of Scripture, these gifts are often broken down into three different chunks. Now, different denominations will break them down differently. But I want to break them down into three areas for one moment. Just to, again, make them a little more memorable. And the first one is the discerning gifts. The second one is the dynamic gifts. And the third one is the declarative gifts for declaring. The discerning, the dynamic, and the declarative gifts. The discerning gifts are wisdom, knowledge, and discernment of spirits. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of spirits. Now, if you were to say to me, Lee, what's the word of wisdom? What's the word of knowledge? Sometimes I don't know where that line is. All I know is that it's used by the Spirit. Okay, only through the Holy Spirit. What does it do? It discloses the mind of God in a specific situation. Or it's a revelation in a specific situation to move you forward. For example, if you were to go up to Duncan and go, Duncan, I've got this issue in life. Well, being 20 years old and Duncan being 42... That's called grace, people. (laughs) Duncan being 22 years further on the journey in the body of Christ, having ministered now for quite a number of years, he's he's got a wisdom. I mean, he just looks like the embodiment of wisdom. Right? Him and Hayden get up, they say, hi, college. You're like, oh, my God. That, That was so powerful. Right? Hayden gets up. I used to be in law enforcement. And you're like, oh, wow. But then I went into ministry. Oh, God. (laughs) He's the embodiment of law and truth. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Grace and law have come to visit us. Doesn't matter what he says from that point. It's going to be wisdom. And he's going to sit there and go, I remember what it was like to be a 20-year-old. And then you sit there and you're like... because wisdom just comes out because they've dealt with people over the years. They've faced life situations over the years. They've, They've been able to discern between what is God and what isn't. Sometimes because the Spirit spoke, sometimes because they learnt the hard way. Like all of us. Oh, that's God. You go down, oh, that's the path of folly. What am I doing? And God just picks you up. I tried to tell you, but you missed it. And so you you learn these gifts over and over again. So you could go up and ask somebody a question and they'll give you an answer and you're like, that's wisdom. That's wisdom from heaven right there. They don't even know that. They're just used to doing that. Like I said, if Cherie said to me, Lee, what tools did you use to build that house? I I don't know. I don't know, like a battery drill, a a nail gun, a saw. I, I, I don't remember. I don't remember which one. All I know is that there were tools, they weren't mine. I used them and this is what we built. Same thing when it comes to the body of Christ, that there's tools for building the body of Christ. There's tools for building the house of God. So we've got wisdom, knowledge, discernment of spirits. 
The second one, the dynamic gifts. Now, as Pentecostals, we love the dynamic gifts. Faith healing miracles. Love that stuff, right? Unbelievable, phenomenal. And I love, I love seeing God operate. I love seeing the supernatural break into the natural or the eternal break into time and act in order to bring about His will and purpose. Remember years ago when I was in college, we had a student. He was given two weeks to live. His name was um, Brendan. 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 Brendan Adams. And, uh, and he came up to Sanger and I and told us, I've got two weeks to live. I've got cancer uh, in the marrow of my bones. And, uh, and I just remember just getting so angry about it that this dude, my age, is about to head home to glory at 23. And I just remember getting so angry about it. And I called Sanger over and I said, Sanger, I just really feel like we've got to pray for this situation. I read this quote by a guy named Smith Wigglesworth and he says, faith knows no defeat. I have no idea what that means, but if we use faith, maybe we'll see a victory in this situation. And Sanger's like, just typical saying, oh yeah, I'm in. I'm, I'm in. I'm in, Burns. See I'm in burn C. And so, so he just gets fired up and, and Sanger just starts. Like, there was no, you know, there was no, this is what we're going to do. Um, he knew half a verse. I knew the other half. So we knew we were better together. All right. All right, there's, a, there's a verse that, by his stripes. And Sanger's like, we are healed. They're like, great, that's it. That's the one. Let's work together here. And so we just begin to pray in other tongues for about, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour. I don't know what happened, but it was like the Lord Himself walked into our room. Still to this day, one of the biggest encounters I've ever had with God. He said, Lee, he's healed. So we come to college the next day. Ray Badham would be here and he'd remember, Aaron Puddle would remember this. And saying, it's like, Bernsie, get up and tell them what happened last night. And I'm like, you get up and tell them what happened last night. He's like, no, Bernsie, you get up and tell them. I said, you're the preacher, you get up and tell them. And, uh, and so, so I ended up getting up. I said, and Brendan was up the back. He was about to go back to Albury. And I said, Brendan, we are praying for you last night. The Lord told us you're healed. And he was like, all right. <laughs> he didn't feel healed. He didn't even look healed. He was like a 90 kilo dude down to 65 kilo now. Come up and thanked us at the end. Oh, as a college, we stood in agreement. This is what God said. We stand in agreement. He went home. And we didn't hear from him. About three months later, he came back to college. You'll never guess what happened. We know what happened. God told us. It was a gift of faith. It was a gift of faith. This is not something that Sanger and I could make up. You know we're not that smart. But we knew that we knew that we knew. God broke through eternity into the natural. Lee, does that happen every time? No, but I believe it can. And I will always pray to that, that uh, extreme when it comes to believing for healing. So there's the dynamic gifts where God breaks in and you're like, oh my God, I know that had nothing to do with me. And the thing is, it did have nothing to do with you. Because when you look at it, you're like, that's really smart and I'm not. So it must have been God. But here's the, here's the thing, college. The Holy Spirit wants to partner with you to bring about His will and purpose. And the last one is the declarative gifts. When we speak into situations, whether through prophecy, sometimes through speaking in tongues with interpretation, and I've been in situations where all of these have functioned. And the Lord wants to use you as His mouthpiece to speak into a person's life. You see, each and every one of us are disciples. But each and every one of us are also called to make disciples. It's this thing that God works in you at the same time that He works through you. And I don't know about you, but I sit there going, God, I wouldn't use me. And it's like God says, that's how people will know me. And sometimes we can pull back out of humility, like, oh God, not me. And God's like, oh no, it's not you, but I'm with you. It's, it's like Moses says to God, who can I say sent me? And God says, tell them I am. 
And, Mo- and Moses says, yeah, but, but how will they know? And God says, my presence will be with you. And Moses tries it a third time. And God says, I am with you. And it's like God saying, Moses, when are you gonna get that it's not about you? If it was left to you, you'd be still out in the desert. It's me working in you to bring about salvation on the earth. And Hillsong College, we have the gifts of the Spirit, nine of them and many others that the Spirit wants to use to help us continue to build and strengthen the body of Christ, to continue to become all that she's called to be on the earth, blameless and spotless. There is nothing greater than building the church, nothing better than being the church, turning up the church, hanging out with the church, getting offended by the church, frustrated by the church, but blessed by the church, spoken to by the church. The church is amazing. There is no other people group on the face of the earth like the church, because there is no other people group where God has put His presence, His empowering presence, the Holy Spirit on His people. At Hillsong College, I'm gonna ask you all to stand in this place. Because I want to remind each and every one of us that we're here to build the church. But here's the good news. You're not here to do it alone. The Master has given a stack of tools, a stack of gifts that we can go about strengthening one another. Whether it be through the discerning gifts, whether it be through the dynamic gifts, or whether it be through the declarative gifts. There's something that we can operate every day to build the body of Christ. Before we go back into worship, I'm gonna get Lewis the Great, we call him around here. Where are you, Lewis the Great? I'm gonna get him up to, come on up here, bro. Gonna get Lewis to pray for us, gonna get Lewis to pray for each and every person online. Lewis is one of our third years from Brownsville, Texas. Yes, sir. He's he's an absolute legend. I'm gonna get you to encourage, pray for people and Dave, lead us in worship off the back. Is that cool? God bless you, college. Awesome. Thank you. So, what a word to start off with. Um, So thank you, Lee, for that. Thanks for encouraging us and just pouring into us more and more each each time you speak. And um, I just want to speak on Galatians 6, verse 9 through 10 in the message. And it says, so, let us not, so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest the crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get a chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us and our community of faith. And you know, the past, I've been here two and a half years, almost three years. And it's been a journey, journey and a half, you know. I think people in my intake and people that have been here for a while, you know, we've been discouraged, you know. It's been difficult. It's, it, it, can, it can get, um, there are moments where you're wondering, why am I even here? Why did I come here to, from halfway across the world, you know? But let me tell you right now that God, is, God brought you here for a reason. And that reason, you didn't come here to experience just Hillsong Church. You didn't just come here to experience what God is doing in Sydney. But you came here to experience God. You came here to experience God in a whole new way. And in a way that you've never thought you would experience Him. So let's not grow weary, weary about what, what's happening right now in our worlds. Let's not grow weary about what's happening in our own personal lives. God is still doing something good in His church, in His people, and through each and every single one of you guys. And right now, going into 2023, let's keep doing that good work. The good work that He began in you, He's going to fulfill it. That promise that God put in your heart, He's going to keep it going, and He's going to fulfill that promise. So right now, as we pray, let's just believe that. Let's keep believing that promise that God put in your heart. That one time that you said, I want to be here. I'm going to trust you when you landed. So if you're comfortable in the room, I just want us to lift our hands and just pray with me. Let's pray. So Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for what you, for, for. God, I thank you for every single person in this room. I thank you for every single promise that you put in each and every single one of our hearts. 
I will promise to build the, your kingdom. I promise to love your people. I promise to keep loving you, God. I pray that as we go out into our days, that as we go out into our lives, as we continue our studies here, and even after our studies, God, I pray that you would just keep encouraging us, keep giving us the strength, keep giving us the courage to step out into faith, to take it one step at a time, God, that you are going to do something incredible in and through your church, God, that we will not grow weary, that we will just keep doing more of your promise, that we will keep doing more of your good, and that we will trust you every single step of the way, God. So right Right now God I thank you for every single thing that you've done in the past few years God I thank you for every single little thing that you're doing right here in this very moment God for every single word that you put in in each and every single one of our hearts and I thank you God for what you're gonna do in the future because we know that it's gonna be incredible we know that it's gonna be good and we know that it's gonna be you God and right now God, we love you we trust you we thank you we pray this in Jesus name amen amen and amen
You know what, college, we are believing for God to continue to pour out His Spirit on our community. For everyone joining us online, that prayer, that moment was for you as well. Uh, we are believing that you'll feel the presence of God wherever you are. Whatever time of the world it might be for you, the Spirit is with you. Amen. And we are on an incredible journey, college. We are in the middle of our theme, Spirit Speak, and we're only halfway there. We're only halfway there. There's still more to come. The Spirit wants to do more in the lives of, of our college, of you. And um, I'm just so expectant for what God is going to do. Amen. Amen. Can we just thank Lee Burns one more time for such an incredible word? <laughs> Tools for building God's house. Very cool. Um, I'm going to ask Shelby, my friend Shelby, to come and join me. <laughs> Shelby. One of our incredible students from South Africa. Now you're going to help me close and get Amazing. out all we need to do. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Let's do it. Yes. So why don't you go first? You look ready to go. Tell yes. us about what's happening with College Life and the Worship Night. Yes. So next week, firstly, we have a Worship Night again on the 12th of October. I don't know if it's going to come up on the 12th of October. And it's honestly been incredible. I don't know if you part of our last one. Um, it was incredible. Like at some point, we didn't have the worship team up. Everyone was just slain and it was just so good. And literally three people came up to me and they said exactly the same thing. And I was like, God, it's fine. You can, you can stop speaking, it's fine. So definitely come check, come check it out. If you're not a student, you're more than welcome to all our open day guests. You're more than welcome. The night is open for everybody. So invite your friends, your family and everybody. And Second thing, can I? Yes. Second thing, do you want to share this one? Oh, work, amazing. Second thing is, we're back on this week with our upskill and development programs, College Live. So check it out. I don't. Know if, yeah, it's not gonna come up. It's fine. It's gonna come up on our Instagram. So um, make sure you follow Hillsong Live College. Yeah, life, yes, college Hillsong life. College Life on Instagram and the info is going to be up for all departments. So come at three to five. Yes. That's, that's so good. It. Stay right there. Stay, right, stay right there. Um, very cool. And um, look, it is lunchtime here in Australia. Um, it could definitely not be lunchtime wherever you are online. So this is a moment to maybe grab a coffee, get a cup of tea. But for all of us here on campus, um, for all of our open day guests, as soon as we finish, hang on, wait one second, there's something coming. Um, for all of our open day guests, we have lunch for you at our Comic Cafe right outside this, the door here on my right. And then for all of our students, we are doing Tuesday Community Gathering Visits Wednesday, and we are doing $3 pizza for everyone here at college. So we're gonna hang out, have some fun, for all of our open day guests, please stay on YouTube. And if you're joining us for our online experience, there is a Zoom link for you to jump into. And before we go to that, Shelby, why yes. don't you close in prayer? And Let's then we're gonna go. head to lunch. Amazing, are we praise song? No, yes, praise song. No, no, uh, just pray. Um, okay, pray. Amazing. Pray. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for such an incredible word, Father. Thank you that your spirit was evident, God. Give us the, the power to actually implement your word, Father God. Let our ears be open so that we can do the word. Let the, let the word not stay here but give us the strength to actually work it out in our daily lives. Give us a discerning spirit, Father God. Give us a doing spirit, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you for your love. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Praise, I don't know if we're gonna go, praise song, no? No, no, no. Okay, go eat lunch, bye.
its unrelenting chase I was on the edge of deception Caught up in my own hesitation Until your love took over me So I Cause I hope 
would be had back. a good little break and that you enjoyed Chapel. How good was Chapel? It was awesome. It was insane. It was that really, idol really at the good. beginning, I was like, oh my gosh. Man, if you're in the room, it was like literally heart pumping. 100%. It was so good. I so love the opener. Yeah. It was such a good atmosphere in the place, just getting everybody ready for what's about to happen. Yeah. I thought it was great. So good. Okay, well, if you guys. You guys have probably already met me. If you haven't, though, I'm Zoe, and I am part of the marketing team here at college. She runs the show around here, hey, to be honest. She's hey. the MVP. I am just <laughs> showing up over here just to be part of it. I love it. But this is Brian. Tell us about yourself. What do you do for college? Lovely meeting you guys. I'm an online trainer. Yes. So everything that has to do with our online sphere, uh, which you probably, some of you are literally just watching through the TV and different things that you're watching or your computer or whatever it is that you're mm -hmm. watching. Um, so I'm usually one of those people in the lectures there or in the tutorials there and for our church I'm, I'm a campus pastor too. Yes, so that's, that's kind of what I do he does around here. It's yeah. so good. We love Brian. We love him as an online trainer. He does so good. Um, but okay, tell us what's happening in the room right now. I don't know if you can see much behind us. So you're probably seeing all these people and you're probably wondering what is happening around this place. So right now we have food served to our the people that have come to our open day as well. Hopefully you have some food in your plate right now as well that you might be joining us. But yeah, it we might have, be breakfast time for you. I don't know. Yeah, breakfast, dinner, maybe it's in the middle of the night and you just need that little snack. Yep. Uh, but we have a band playing at the back as well. We have merch as well that you can actually purchase. Hey, yeah, I'm going to grab hey. something. Let me grab She's something. She's going to grab some merch, but you can also purchase the merch uh, online if you would like to have some of our Hillsome College merch. Uh, I think so is coming. Ooh, there we go. Very nice. Hillsome College, all the countries and all the different people from different so places that make Hillsome College who we are. Yeah, so I don't know if Brian said, but today for Open Day, we have got 25% off the online merch store just for you guys. We want to make sure you get a gift today as well. So you can head to the Hillsong merch online store and then you can put in the code OPENDAY25. I'm pretty sure that's right, but there should be some graphics coming up on the screen right now. So make sure you grab yourself some merch. You can come repping your merch when you arrive in Sydney for college or you can rep it at home. Let everyone know that you are a Hillsong College student. Mm. You could be like me. I've got this, this merch on today. I, have my, pretty nice. I also have some merch. But I, for some reason, I thought I had to dress up a little bit. And then oh. I saw Zoya, and I was like, I should have brought my merch. He, he didn't get the memo. I have, I have the Hillsum College um, hoodie. Oh, yeah, nice. I have the similar shirt, and I have another, nice. just a simple, like a shirt, uh, which is great. I think being 10 years here, you kind of get some stuff. True. You've you been know? here for a while. Been so here good. for a while, yeah. Okay, tell us about when you first arrived in Sydney. Did you come for college? I did come for college. Yeah. I came uh, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, which was great. Came in January 5th, which yeah. will be... Yeah, January 5th will be in three more months, so that will be yes. literally 10 years since Amazing. I've arrived in Australia. So cool. But I came to do Hillsong College and came for two years, mm -hmm. stayed yep. uh, for way longer than I thought. I got married, became part of this great church Amazing. and been part of it ever since. So, so that's good. been quite fun. Love it. Okay. And uh, just to reiterate again what's happening for you guys on the live stream right now. So you have two options for our class this afternoon. You can either stay tuned on here on YouTube and we're going to be live streaming the class that is going to be happening in the Epi foyer in about 40 minutes time it's going to start. Um, so if you want to take a break and come back, that's fine. We're going to be here yep. keeping the momentum, having a bit of fun until we're then. We're just here to make sure that you are having a good time. Yes, That's the exactly. whole reason why we're here. Yes, so you can stay tuned on this li live stream right now if you want to be a part of an on-campus lecture experience. But if you are oh, interested in Oh, there we go. We have a student behind us. Come oh, on over amazing. here. Why don't we just let him to join? Amazing. Come on. Oh, come, you come in here. What's your name? Hey, my name is Kevin. I'm from yeah. Bolivia and I speak Spanish. Yeah. And we, if you are watching this, we're waiting for you. Yes, There we, we are. go. There we go. So Thanks, Kevin. Thank Thanks, you. Kev. Sorry for interrupting you. No, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> so stay tuned on here if you want to do a live stream of an on-campus on class. But if you would like to experience like an online lecture and tutorial, you can head over to the Zoom link, which has been reoccurring coming up on the screen. So head to that Zoom link and we've got a team waiting for you guys. They're ready to take you through an online class experience and a tutorial to kind of give you an idea of what an online college experience is like. Yeah, right. I think you choose whichever you prefer. Maybe you want to go for the, next, the first 30 minutes in one and the next 30 minutes in another, something like this, whichever you prefer. Yeah, just open them both up. Open the Zoom yeah. up, open the YouTube, have them both. You're going to have you literally like. one headphone on one thing <laughs> and the other one on the other thing, and you will be great. Love it. But what do we have now, Zoe? 
I reckon we should chat to our friend Aldrin. Uh, let's go. He's my South African brother. Hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. Come in the middle. Come in the middle. Come in the middle. Let's you should go. come in the middle. Okay. It'll be a good thing. Hey, what's up? How are you guys doing? Oh, such an awesome day out here at Hillsong College Open Day. Lovely to meet you guys online. We can't wait uh, to see what God has in store for you. And I'm just so excited to be here. That's awesome. 100%. Yeah. All right. So first of all, you kind of mentioned already you're South African. 100%. Right. I'm South African, Johannesburg, so, Eldorado Park. Tell us a little bit about your college experience. Uh, man, I actually started online. Online people. I started online uh, two years ago and I was in South Africa doing um, during COVID and you know it was a dream and I really wanted to be here so bad and eventually it became a reality. So I've been in Australia for almost eight months and it, it has been nothing short of a blessing. It has been phenomenal. That's awesome. Yeah. You're pretty much an Australian. I'm, I'm, I'm an Aussie, mate. I'm, <laughs> I'm an Aussie. The funny thing is that none of us here is, an, is Australian. No, we're She's not. from New Zealand, I'm from Ecuador, and we have a South African hey. right here. Yeah. International community. A hundred percent. Yeah, so um, um, I'm a second second, so I'm doing the pastoral stream. So we're actually part of the last uh, intake that is doing the VET. But my hopes is definitely to move on to do degree. And now uh, we'll just see what God has in store. I want to do a bachelor's nice. in theology. Yeah, I just got to ask you that. Bachelor's of theology. What made you choose bachelor of theology? I think because like I've like I've been doing ministry for some time back in South Africa. I was part of, of, of doing ministry and I've learned a lot coming to Hillsong College. But now I think I just want to get into the theory side of, of biblical studies and just understanding. In fact, just for God to reveal a different side of, of, of him to me, so I think theology has that. Nice. Okay. I think that's awesome. I think that's tell such us, a good thought. Tell us a little bit more about what your like normal week looks like. Where do you serve? What do you get involved in outside of classes? <laughs> um, a normal week. So Monday, I'm usually off on a Monday. So Mondays I get to chill, but I don't really chill. I go to work. I need to make the money uh, to pay the bills. So uh, Monday I'm at work. Tuesday I'm at college. Uh, Wednesday I'm at college. Thursday at college, and then. On the week, Fridays I also get a day off and then Saturday working and then Sundays when I actually get to serve. So Wednesdays we serve, we do chapel, we do pre-show, we do, I sing, um, I sometimes I would MC if I'm, if I, if I'm given you the say You say you sing? Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. seen you, but maybe do you want to, do you want to show people how good you yeah. sing? I think it'll be awesome. Uh, man, I, I can't think of a song now. Like, I, I, I would love There's to some, sing. Something, something lovely. <laughs> Oh, to do a rap like the item today. Oh man, this is on the spot. This is difficult. But all that I know. Hey, you gotta prove to the people that your words are actually <laughs> valid. I'm just saying. I'm just with you guys. I don't know, Brian. Why are you doing this to me, bro? <laughs> okay, we can move on. We gotta yeah. let. We gotta let them wait until they see you okay. yeah. singing at some point. Yeah. 100%. You it's a. It's wait. a. It's a massive blessing. Yes, it's a massive <laughs> blessing, and the presence of God falls. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So, so good. Uh, yeah. So I. I do that during the week and then Sunday I serve with the 6 p.m. team so we do seating communities where we go up to new people, existing people and just have conversations and just find out where they are in life and we basically do life with people, pray with them and um, yeah, it's just so awesome. Love it. That's awesome. So good. Wow. That's really cool. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank awesome you. chilling with you guys. That Take care. Night. See ya. Awesome. Love it. Oh, who else can we grab? Who we have someone else here, I think. Which she'll be coming in a minute. Yes, oh. come on in. Come, come on, on over. In. Yes. Jarrell, is that how you say your name? Jarrell. So Jarrell is actually a guest yes. when it comes to Open Day. So nice love to have it. you here. I'm so happy good. that they've chosen all the tall men in our college, you know? <laughs> yeah, I love like, it. Like it's like because they're noticing now that we're not actually very tall. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Jarrell, where are you from? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm from Cabramera. Nice. Let's nice. go, Cabra. Oh, yes, no one really knows what that is, but oh, I know I I like going eat there. There's I uh, forgot the name of this restaurant right now. Um, I forgot about it, but it's at the top. Big food. Oh, Jay's Kitchen. That nice. Jay's Kitchen is my local. I uh, I go there quite often. That's awesome. So I'm from Cabra. Yeah, I'm from Cabramatta. Uh, been coming to Hills since I was a kid, but um, growing up, we didn't really know what church to plan ourselves in. Yeah. But I'm here today, you know, nice. expecting for the Lord to do yes. something. Yes. Yeah. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. Do you know what? Okay, first thing, what has been your highlight of the day so far? I feel like I haven't hit it yet, yeah. but I'm excited for classes. 
Yeah, the class is going to be epic. Mm -hmm. Do you know, okay, we've got them on the screen right here. What one do you think you're going to choose? Uh, music performance. Nice, nice. Music be performance, awesome. but Norman looks... Are you a musician? Um, I like writing music, so... Cool. Yeah. We'll yeah. That would be awesome. Nice. You're a writer. That would be awesome. Love it. That yeah, because... Really so our songwriting classes, it's actually a subject that you can choose in our undergraduate program. So if you want to do Bachelor of Ministry or Bachelor of Theology, it's an elective subject that you can choose to actually do songwriting. So that will be awesome. It will be such a good class. Love That's it. That's exciting. So, so now, quick question. This is more putting you on the spot. Like if you were to start Hillsong College, right? Obviously, you're here at Open Day. Some people are watching us as well. What would you like to, I would say, grow in specifically? Uh, for me, it would be the word more because um, I feel like I struggle a lot trying to dive into what God's got for me. And I feel like the only way to get deep into that is to read His Word. I 100%. Mean, you know what I mean? So good. Yeah. Uh, that's I think that's awesome. a great thing. And I think one of the great things that we do teach here and what, one of the things that we want our students to continue to grow in is their understanding of the Word of God. Yeah. And I'm believing that will be your experience, which will be awesome. So good. Thanks Thank for jumping you. on. You're Thank the best. you for jumping and being part of it. <laughs> so good. Zoe, tell us, what are we doing? Okay. We, okay. Let me see, let me see. If you guys have any more questions that we have not answered yet today and you want to send them through on the live stream, you guys can put them in the YouTube chat and we will try our best to answer some more questions. So, you can send yeah. that through. Yeah, I, one of the things I love, can mm -hmm. I mention something yeah, about do it. Audrin, he talked about the ability of like deep, digging deeper into the Word. Like yes. I did four and a half years of study here. Uh, so I came for two, as I mentioned, I've been here 10, but I ended up doing four and a half years. Yeah. Uh, which was back in the day our VET, our VET program for three years and a year and a half of our uh, bachelor's program. Yes. And Amazing. I loved it because one of the things that I would say Hillsong College is good at is that we're not just a college, we're Hillsong College. What does that mean? That we're mm -hmm. actually part of a local community yeah. called Hillsong, mm -hmm. right? A local church called Hillsong. And we get to build it. We get to put in practice what we're learning. So when I did my first three years, it was all practical, yeah. learning, how do we grow? But ultimately, what the area that our students are going to keep doing is the, mm -hmm. the bachelor's. Yes. And that bachelor's just gave me so much insight, so much, I would say, brought so much truth. Yeah. So that I could go, okay, now I need to teach these people. Yeah. So even when I preach, like, I can mm. still go back to some of the notes yeah. that I had, some of the things I that I learned of ways how to do and things now. Yeah. Which is actually quite a blessing for me yeah. now. Yeah, so good. Similar to my journey, because I did two years of the vocational program straight out of high school. So I was like freshly turned 18, 18, 19, moved here, did our vet program, studied pastoral leadership. And then I actually moved back to New Zealand to where I'm from and worked for a church nice. back home in New Zealand for four years. And then I was kind of the same point where I was like, okay, I've done a lot of practical ministry now. I feel very confident in like my ministry leadership, but now I would love to go deeper into actually my understanding of God's word and theology. So I felt God put it on my heart to actually come back again and be a part of our Bachelor of Theology And now program. you haven't gone back? No, not yet. I'm here. Good. So. Good. We've kept her this time. Hey. We've kept her this time. <laughs> she's a massive blessing to us, which is a very good thing. Yeah, it's true. So why'd you stay? Why did I stay here? Yeah, why not go back this time? What happened? Well, it's amazing. I love being a part of the team at college. I love what I do. I find so much purpose in being a part of this team and seeing people like you get to be a part of college, whether that's online or in person, it's honestly the best job. Yeah. It's so fun. I love what I do. So I actually now, so I came back, did um, Bachelor of Theology in-person classes, and then now that I'm working full-time, I've switched to being an online student where I actually do my classes online now. So I awesome. feel like I've had the full spectrum of the Hillsong College experience by now, which has been great. That's actually really cool. And I know but many yeah. people that are doing that specifically mm -hmm. when it comes to our mm -hmm. online degrees and all the different things that, for example, maybe you did three years of Hillsong College back in the day, yeah. but you want to prep when it comes to your degree. Yeah. You can do it online. Like yeah. that's a beautiful thing about one of the options that we have. Yeah. That you can just join us from anywhere in the world do it right in the comfort of your house. So you don't true. have to come all the way to Sydney, even though we would love for you to come to Sydney. We can go straight to your lounge, which yeah. I think is a good thing. 100%. You can eat snacks while you watch lectures. Hey, we love that. You can that. never do that in Robert Ferguson's class if you have Robert Ferguson. That is true. That wouldn't be a that possibility. Neither in my class, to be honest. I wouldn't let you eat there. Love I'm very it. nice here, but in class I'm a little bit more strict. 
<laughs> just a tiny bit more. <laughs> okay, we have one question from someone that they sent in. They're asking, what is the deadline to apply for the January 2023 intake? So our semester in uh, January, like beginning of the year, actually starts in February. So you pretty much have till the end of January to get your application in for on-campus or online study. Um, but if you head to our website and look at the admissions page, it will have the calendar of when the exact enrollment date is. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head, I'm sorry. No, I um, think what will be best to know as well, like for example, if you want to do uh, our January, well, February uh, yeah. 2023 online, you have a lot more flexibility, but yeah. if you want to come into the country, I would suggest you plan ahead, yeah. especially if you come from a country where visas can be a little bit difficult yes. to get. Mm -hmm. I come from Ecuador. It took me a while to get my visa. It took like a month and a half, yeah. right? So I would suggest you prepare that you come ready. If you want to apply, let's say to come into the room, I would suggest you start the application as soon as possible. Uh, but in online, you get a little bit more flexibility. Uh, leg room for you to be able yeah. to just maybe potentially start applying in January yeah. and start classes in February, which will yeah. be great. Like we were even talking earlier today that you can even start online first just to dip your toes in the water so you can study from home, maybe do a couple of subjects online and then later on come and join us in person in Sydney if that's what you want to do yeah. as well. Like there's so many different options. There's not one way to do it. Um, so yeah, our admissions team would love to help you guys if you need help with your application or you have questions about visas and when can I enroll. Um, there should be a graphic hopefully that comes up, but you can email future.students at hillsong.com and that's how you can ask your questions, get application help, um, all that good stuff. Yeah, especially yeah. if you're an Australian student maybe watching. We have fee help as well when yes. it comes to our, our Australian students that so you can be able to yeah. access that from the Australian government. Yeah. Uh, which will be a massive help for those that are local yeah. um, mm. from this country. I think it's a blessing yeah. for those that are call themselves Australians. Yes, which it's is a true. good thing. And we don't actually offer scholarships or anything like that for international students, but that's also one of the benefits of online study mm. is that if finances are a stretch, like for me at the moment, I'm just doing one subject online, so I only pay for that one subject. I'm not paying full fees. So, um, if that, that could be an option for you, that could yeah. be a solution for you. If you're just looking yeah. to study one or two subjects, it's more affordable. You can do that online as well. Yeah, but I know plenty of people I think do we that. have another friend who's going to join awesome. us. What Robin. about great, 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 great staff people? It's Robin. Come on over, Yay. Robin. Come into the middle. Oh, hello. We have questions for you. People are putting things in the chat as well, which is great. Love it. People got, the chat just went nuts when they saw oh, you. Oh, yeah. I mean, I receive it. Yeah. <laughs> I receive it. I receive it to the screen. So thank you. <laughs> Any questions you have for Robin? Hey, why don't you tell us what you do as a part of college staff team? Oh man, what do I not do? No, she said. Um, I work. That's true. That's very true. <laughs> you know, um, but I work alongside our practicum team. So that's the practical component of when you come to college, getting plugged into church life, getting to implement what you're doing in the classroom into a Sunday, into a weekday, what you're wanting to build skill-wise, um, going into ministry, into business, whatever that looks like and also work alongside our academic team, so equitable support officers. So um, if there's any need or help around studying itself, different skills, understandings, um, and work with our team to implement some of our introduction to academic writing, if you're learning those skills. So just various components to help integrate. Nice, okay, I have a question, but if you also have questions about practicum and like serving, Chuck them in the chat and we will ask Robin. But I have a question. Okay, how much choice does someone have in where they do their practicum and where they serve? So say I'm more of a theology or pastoral focused student, but I actually love to sing or I love music. Can I still serve in those areas? Absolutely. What's great about college at this point is we can work with you to find an area that you're passionate about. So how does that work together? But also now we have college life. So there's different labs, there's different practical ways that you can learn skills if it's not necessarily where you're serving. So there's ways to ebb and flow that. So like, maybe I've never really done preaching, but I just want to learn some of the various components. Well, I can go to College Life, three to five on a Thursday, and actually get some of those skills. Or we just chat with you and actually discuss what does church life look like here? Because there might be a fair few, if not multitude of different teams when you come here versus maybe from a home church or a different location. And so we can help integrate you into that, explain it a bit more give you a bit more understanding of that. Love it. I so think that's good. pretty awesome. The fact that we have that ability for you to learn different things, the things that you would like to get involved might not be straight the thing that you're serving on, but you can, it's different options. So 
One of the things I love that we always put effort in and we make sure that our staff are doing it, we're involved as well. Yeah. Like we don't just come and teach you this and then yeah. hope that you learn it from someone else. We actually put it into practice. So Robin, we've been ser we served together 10 years ago. We did. Which is pretty we awesome. Did. We She's did. been serving for 10 years, more than 10 years, I yes. think. Yes. Uh, but tell us a little bit, what do you do on a Sunday? Yeah, so I am a part of our um, Hillsong Macquarie location, about 20 minutes from here. Um, and I'm really involved in the creative team there. Um, so a range of things from vocal directing, um, worship leading, looking after our team nights. If we have creative team away, helping to facilitate um, our platform team. So various components I've been a part of for quite a long time now, and I love it. And my husband and I get to serve together now, um, both in that team. and so. The community aspect of that has just been so vital over time. I mean, those are the people that were at our wedding, who have celebrated such high moments with us. And so I couldn't imagine not having had that and being a part of that still in life at this moment as well. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, I, I love If you guys aren't aware, actually in Sydney, Hillsong has, oh, over like 15 locations. Yeah, in with, Sydney, in yeah, Sydney. we have a fair few. Yeah, so like these guys are talking about the Macquarie locations. So as a part of serving, you don't necessarily have to be a part of our massive Hills campus on a Sunday. If you would prefer to be a part of a smaller campus. You can um, come to our massive yeah. Maryland's campus or our massive Macquarie yeah. campus. Honestly. We will love you. Uh <laughs> yes. Honestly, so many of our students are like so key to making our smaller locations happen. Yeah. They're the ones who are worship leading. They're the ones who are playing instruments. They're the ones yeah. who are emceeing, even preaching sometimes on Sundays. Um, so that's also an option when you're a part of college here in Sydney. And obviously, if you're keen to study online, you will be doing the exact same in your local church at home. So it's pretty fun. It's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Robin, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for coming. You're the best. <laughs> So, All sorry, right. what are we doing now? Maybe let's just give them a little bit of recap before we go. We have a few more minutes yes. together, so I'm okay. looking forward for what all you're about to experience. Exactly, exactly. Be great. Okay, we have one more question I oh, see nice. from Mika. She's asking, do you have to be 18 to be able to attend the Hills Campus for a Bachelor of Theology? The answer is yes. So, um, you have to be 18 to be able to study with us at Hillsong College. Um, yeah, so that's for all courses. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much all the courses, especially if you're coming from overseas, you have to be over 18. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, great. tell us what's happening now again. All right, we're about a few minutes away from our in-person lecture starting. So if you haven't heard, you can still have time to jump on the Zoom link to experience an online lecture and tutorial, or you can stay on this link on YouTube and we're about to have an in-person lecture with current students I think it is Cam McDonald who is teaching the lecture and is on theology. It's going nice. to be awesome. Cam is so, a man. Cam is such a good yes. teacher, phenomenal Bible teacher. And I'm really excited that you get to hear from him as well. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. That's happening in a few minutes. Um, and we're going to have a little bit of a break before then so you can go and grab a notebook if you want to take notes for the class. If you want to grab a drink, you can do that. Um, but yes, so that's happening on this YouTube live stream. But if you would like to experience an online lecture and tutorial with our online team, that's also happening on the Zoom link. So you can scan that QR code to head to the Zoom. That's going to be awesome. And then after the lectures have happened, so after the in-person lecture, after the online lecture wraps up, we've also got course consultations happening. So what's happening there is straight after the classes, it's going to be the same Zoom link, so you can head to that Zoom link after the lecture and we've got our team ready to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with you. So if you have any more questions that haven't been answered today, we've got a team to be able to answer those questions. And they're just there to help you figure out which course is actually best for you, whether you want to study online, whether you want to study on campus, if you want to study part-time. They're just there to help answer your questions. If you're interested in music and wanting yeah. to know which is the best course for that, they are ready to answer your questions and help you um, figure out what course is best for you yeah. and hopefully start your application today. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. If you can start your application today, literally it helps us just get everything ready for you. Yeah. So that we can make sure that you're starting the best way possible in the next few months or the next few, yeah, maybe six months, what, three months, whatever it is you would like to start. Yeah. We would love to have you here and we cannot wait to have you with us here at Hillsong College. So good. Okay, well, we're going to head to a short break very soon, but stay tuned and we'll have our live lecture starting in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you soon. Take care.
found in the desert You called me by name And you showed me the way I should go I'm No longer captain No longer bound By these voices of fear and doubt So here I am, I'm on my knees, I give you everything, I'm not alone, for you've heard my call, I'll be still and know that you go before me, behind me, beside me, you have already said the victory, oh Lord, you go before me.
Well, good afternoon, everybody, uh, both in the room and everyone who's just joined us online. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, hey, everyone in the room, why don't we just welcome all of our Open Day guests who've joined us online. And let's welcome all of our Open Day guests that have joined us in the room. I can see a few faces around that I haven't seen much. And so, uh, hello, my name is Cam McDonald and I'm pleased to have you all here. And so welcome, 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 hello. It's great to have you in the room. Yes, hello. There's a few people I have met today. Um, but I am excited to be with you for what I think will be an exciting lecture. And so I hope you've come ready with your pens and your paper or your notepad or your phone to take notes, whatever you want to do. Um, so I might just before we get into any topic and the detail, just let you know how this is going to run, okay? So um, obviously with our open day guests, uh, we've, we've basically set up the day for you to be able to come and enjoy as much of this as you want. Um, we've planned for you to be with us for an hour and then we've got some other things going on at two o'clock straight outside. Um, again, for you, if you are online, um, we're going to have some things planned for you uh, straight after this first hour. Um, now, you might decide, I'm so hooked, I need to stay for another hour. We're going to take a break anyway, so you'll have a time to kind of just, you know, go to the bathroom and decompress a little bit. And if you have some questions, you're welcome to head outside and go to that. Um, we can give you a gift and all those types of things. And then after that, um, you're welcome to come back in if you wanted to stay a little bit longer. Um, so that is kind of a little bit of a nutshell of where we're going to, we're going to do an hour together. We'll take a break and then we're going to finish with just under an hour together um, later in the afternoon. And again, if you're at open day, you're welcome to pop into the afternoon, but we'll explain that towards the end so you have an idea of where we're heading. All right. Are we all good? Ready to go? Fantastic. Um, Emily, I have an answer for you and I know exactly what your question is. Where are the slides? Uh, the portal, literally, I know. I know you were asking. Um, no, I actually... Uh, I, I, it's a typo. That's literally all it is. My apologies, typos. Um, no, it is lecture seven. Um, yeah, it is lecture seven. So I w what I will say is actually in previous years when I've taught this subject, we've actually had an extra week and this normally would have fallen on lecture eight. Um, but it is a typo for today. So there you go. You can receive this as lecture seven and it does fall completely in line with what all of you who were in the room last time did, which was we talked about the humanity of Jesus. So this is kind of like a part two. Now, if you are visiting again, you're not going to miss out on anything. Um, we're going to go there and explain uh, this particular topic. And as you can see, we are talking about the deity of Christ. This one comes in context of a few weeks that we have discussed, which includes the hum uh, humanity in the image of God. Um, so again, this was from a previous course, but what I wanted to highlight was week seven and eight, which officially today is week six and seven. Um, we talked about last time we met the humanity of Jesus, and today we are talking about the divinity of Jesus. So what we've got to understand is when we talk about the person of Jesus Christ, we are talking about the fact that he is both fully God and at the very same time, fully man. All right. Now you got to brace yourself because some of you might be going, well, how can you be 100% something and then 100% something else? Because that equals 200%. I know my maths isn't that good, but that doesn't make sense. So we're going to go there and kind of explain how this all works. But before we do anything else, I reckon we should pray. You up for that? All right, let's pray. If you're online and joining us, why don't you pray with me as well? Lord, we just thank you so much for the privilege, the honor that we get to come around the person of Jesus and the things of God. And we get to sit under your word and learn about who you are. And we get to go deeper in our relationship with you. I pray for everyone in the room and everybody online who's joined today. And I pray, God, that we would have open hearts, open minds and receptivity to understand and to receive that which you want us to hear today. And so I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So as you can see, where are we going today? Well, by the end of today, our goal is that you will firstly have a biblical foundation of some key scriptures and passages of the Bible that actually help us to understand Jesus as God. 
All right, because again, we've got these two concepts. We talked about Jesus, the human, and there's actually quite a lot of consensus by historians and uh, scholars of the New Testament that Jesus was in fact a human being that walked the earth, right? Often where people get a little bit awry is how can he be God and man, right? The deity of Jesus is often the thing that trips people up a little bit. And so the goal today is to unpack a little bit of what the Bible has to say about Jesus' deity. And the other thing we're going to look at is some of the heresies that existed in the early church as they were all trying to figure out who is this person, Jesus, that rocked up and walked amongst us, turned the world upside down and is now described by his followers as the Lord and the creator of the universe, Right, So basically for 400 years of church history, the early Christians were trying to work out what just happened. Are you getting me? They were trying to theologize and put in a box what God just did and what he meant when he said and did what he did. Yeah. So my question is, why is the doctrine of Jesus' divinity so important? Now, we might have a discussion about that in a moment, but I want to highlight a, a little bit of a story where uh, you might he- have heard, has anyone heard of the TV show host, Larry King? Has anyone heard of Larry King? Very famous TV host in the USA. Um, he's actually either dead or very old. <laughs> very old. <laughs> is he dead or is he very old? I can't remember. Someone's going to Google it and tell me. But either way, um, Larry King, very famous TV host, was once asked, he's dead, okay, Lord Jesus, <laughs> sorry, anyone, my bad. Larry King was once asked, who would he most liked to have interviewed in history? It's often one of those questions you ask over coffee, right? If you could have a coffee with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, Larry King was asked that, that question. And one of the names that he suggested was Jesus. And when he was asked what he would have asked Jesus, which question would he have asked Jesus, he said this. He said, I would, uh, I would like to ask him if he was indeed virgin born because the answer to that question would define history. That was his question. I would like to sit down with Jesus and and ask him, were you born of a Virgin Mary? Because if you were, the answer would define history. In other words, basically Larry King was saying that the answer to the question, was Jesus born of a Virgin? That's going to tell us whether Jesus is God or not. That is essentially what his question was all about. He was asking the question, is Jesus in fact God? Because if he is the world gets changed. The world is upside down and my life is going to be different forever. That's what Larry King was saying. So the question then arises, well, why did Jesus not speak often or very openly about his divinity? What did he in fact say that might support the idea that Jesus was God? What views have developed which might actually diminish our idea of his deity And are those views still out there today? Why is it important that Jesus was born of a virgin? Why does it matter whether Jesus was 100% God and 100% man or some other percentage, like 50% and 50%? Why does that matter? Why do you think it's important? So I'm going to ask you. I'm going to turn it over to the crowd. And maybe if you're connected online, you might want to write something down. Uh, or you can even put it in the chats. I believe you're on YouTube, so you could even pop it in the chats and connect if that's a way you can do that. Either that or write it down. But I would love for you just really briefly for two minutes or less, turn to the person next to you and tell me, why do you think Jesus being God is so important? Just in your own understanding. No wrong answers. You can hazard a guess at it. What do you think? All right, so turn to the person next to you and just for a minute or two minutes, I want you to try and answer the question, why is it important? Why do you think it's important? And then we'll, go, we'll come back and we're going to begin to unpack and answer that question. So off you go, do that. I'm going to give you a moment, both our online, our open day guests and our students, you can all chat together and we'll come back.
I'll give you 30 seconds. All right. Okay, we might refocus our attention. Hands up if you had an interesting conversation with the person next to you. You heard a, a good response. Yeah, very cool. Maybe you had some questions that arose. You're like, I'm not even sure what the answer to that one is. That's a tricky question. Um, what I'd love to know is just out in the crowd and um, again online, we're going to get be able to hear from people in the room here. Um, what were some of your thoughts? So very quickly, if you could summarize, we might have Lincoln come around with a microphone. So if you're online, you can hear these thoughts as well. Would anyone like to share? What was, just give me like the 10 second version of what you discussed. Anyone would like to share? So we've got Dana and Emily. We'll start there. And then if anyone else wants to go, you can just pop your hand up. Why is the deity of Jesus important? 10 second version. Okay, Off 10 you go. seconds. Uh, because if Jesus wasn't perfect, he couldn't have been the perfect sacrifice for our sins and he couldn't have been the perfect example for us to follow. Right. There you go. There's some big ideas. So if Jesus wasn't God, he wouldn't have been perfect and therefore be our perfect example and our perfect sacrifice. Now, that's some big ideas that would take quite a while to tease out. We're going to get there a little bit later on. So good thoughts. Would anyone, did anyone else discuss that or you kind of, you sound, sound like you agree with that? Cool. Okay, Emily, over to you. Um, yeah, if he wasn't fully human, he couldn't die. And if he wasn't fully God, he couldn't raise from the death. Right. If he wasn't fully human, he couldn't die, right, in our place. And then if he wasn't fully God, he couldn't rise from the dead, also in our place. There you go. So there's some, there's some paradox in that, isn't there? Would you agree? There's some tricky stuff in there to fully understand. Any other thoughts? Maybe on this side of the room or down the front? Any other thoughts? Okay, over here we've got two, two people that want to share. Okay, I don't mind who goes first, but I did see two hands. Okay. So I got two things. Um, first, Jorge said, um, because God was fully man, he was like next to us, he's with us, and he totally understands us. He sees, like, not that God didn't know, but because he's fully man, he's like, um, we feel more connected because he was fully man, right? Right. And then I said, um, because was Jesus was fully man and fully God, um, that's something supernatural that we could never like imagine how that works, and I think that's totally fine. Um, and like back in the days, you had like pharaohs who would call themselves gods as well. Right. Maybe they described themselves as 50% God and 50% men. But Jesus was not that. He was more than that. Something right. supernatural. There you go. There's an interesting idea. So we're kind of paralleling some of these old ancient ideas of what gods were or demigods as it were, 50-50. And Jesus is actually, the, the message here is, no, no, no. Jesus is far superior to them all. What else? Jono. Yeah, we said... Um, he needed to have the authority because if he wasn't God, then how is, how is he going to say all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, right? Like right. he's just another random human, like who cares? Yeah. So he had, he had to be God for that. And then another one is he had to be God to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament. There you go. Because if he wasn't God, then again, like they'd still be waiting for the Messiah, right? They'd still be yeah. waiting for um, everlasting father, prince of peace, like this, this man to come on earth. And, okay. So yeah. there's some big ideas there too. We've got the fulfillment of prophecy. Jesus was prof or basically Jesus, according to his own words and the words of others was the fulfillment of multiple prophecies right throughout the old Testament. Um, and then the other one you were saying was his own claims. Um, he made some, some pretty big claims out there and for him to actually do that, he would have had to be God to fulfill that. Now, we're going to get to all of that in the next few minutes. So thank you, Lincoln. You can come and grab a seat. Thank you. And thank you for everyone for sharing as well. Now, what you might find interesting, this actual picture here, um, I don't just put random images up. All of these images mean something and they're often quite famous images. This one here is actually a fourth century artwork. Um, it's a mural painting in the catacomb of Comadilla. Um, and basically Christian art in Rome was often, um, you know, quite famous for its depictions of Jesus. And this particular one um, actually depicts Jesus probably for one of the first times as more of a Jewish figure in the way that he's portrayed. So in Roman art, they would often paint you like a Roman. Does that make sense? So you wouldn't have a beard and you'd kind of be a bit more, you know, um, baby faced as it were. Um, and often you'd have a short tunic because that was the fashion of Rome at the time. So Jesus would often be portrayed as a Roman, 
in the real early, early, early days. But this is where you start to see things shift and people in the fourth century started to actually um, depict Jesus as someone of more identifiably Jewish appearance in the fourth century with things like long hair um, and a beard, which was not common in in uh, Rome, in the Roman uh, civilization at the time. Now, what's also interesting about this picture is that these two letters, either side of it, you got to remember, this is 400 AD. So we're not too far, historically speaking, from the life of Jesus itself. We're not too far into church history. But by this time, they had put images and symbols next to paintings of Jesus and pictures of Jesus. These images say Alpha and Omega. So by 400 AD, there was already an awareness, a belief, and an understanding that Jesus was God. They were using those images to portray that Jesus is in fact divine. Um, so these images basically say they, they signify that concept in the Bible of I am the beginning and the end, right? That was something that God said in scripture. Are you getting this so far? So you can see right in the early church, right in the early history of Christianity, there was an awareness that Jesus was in fact God. Now, we're going to build some evidence to prove this. Are you good for that? All right, so the next few minutes together, what we're going to do is explore some of the evidence in the scripture for the divinity of Jesus. And I think that's going to be pretty exciting. So let's go on the journey. Firstly, I'm just going to give you some big picture things. When you look at the biblical record, what you'll find is that in the eyewitnesses' eyes, Jesus was no ordinary person. <laughs> he wasn't just a regular guy. In the eyewitnesses' eyes, Jesus was a pretty extraordinary person. For example, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city, it says, was stirred and they were asking, who is this guy? Now, I don't know about you or me, but when I walk into my local supermarket, no one's getting over the loudspeaker and saying, who is that guy? Happens to Alejo. <laughs> Sorry, Alejo. Just you guys. Okay. Forgiveness, Lord. Uh, so Jesus rocks up and people pay attention. So at least there you're getting an inkling that he wasn't an ordinary man. Now, that's, the, that's not the only proof we need, right? That's not even proof necessarily. This is the start of the journey along that way. Now, when people asked, who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. So already, we're starting to see that the people that were surrounding Jesus saw him as something special. There was something about who he was that was like an echo of another world. Why would they call him a prophet? Well, prophets were there to represent God. They were meant to be spokespersons for God. So at very least, right at the beginning, when Jesus is starting to show up, the people around him that saw him went, there's something different. So that's the, but that you could even just start there. It's not, it, I'm not saying that's a proof. I'm just saying this is the start of the journey. Further to that, these are just the eyewitnesses. But what about the followers of Jesus Christ? Well, Peter, we know the story, identified Jesus as Messiah, didn't he? Right? Jesus asked him the question, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, you are the Christ. Right? The word the Christ means the anointed one or the Messiah. So here Peter is identifying Jesus again as a special person on the earth. Now, again, there's echoes of another world there. This messianic figure was meant to be, now in Jewish understanding, the Messiah was actually meant to be a man who they thought was going to overthrow the Romans, which is why when you get to the New Testament and you see people like Barabbas, Barabbas was the, one of the guys that was going to be crucified and he got set free in place of Jesus. And they said, who should you let go? Jesus has basically been whipped and beaten and taken to the slaughter and he's about to get crucified and he stands up before all the people and they say, who should we let go, Jesus or Barabbas? And the crowd shouts, 
Barabbas. Why did they shout Barabbas? Because at that point in time, the Jews thought that the Messiah would be a, a military leader that would overthrow Rome. That's who they thought was going to come and rescue them. Now, here's the paradox here. Here's the irony. Right standing next to Barabbas, right, who was known as a zealot. He was literally a guy that would go and stab Roman soldiers in an attempt to start riots to overthrow Rome. That was his whole purpose. And that's what the zealots would do. And they felt like that was their calling to bring back Messiah. If they did this enough, Messiah would come, they would ra raise a big enough problem and they would cause an, a big enough issue that they would end up overthrowing the Romans and bring back the true Israeli king to oversee all of Israel. That was their understanding. So they're sitting there with Jesus himself and Barabbas and they go, let's free Barabbas. Why? Because they thought they had a better chance of bringing Messiah back with Barabbas. And yet the Messiah himself was standing right in front of them. How interesting. How interesting. So you can see here that the followers of Jesus had identified Jesus as the Messiah, as the anointed one, the Christ. Further to that, the gospel writer in John's testimony, he's writing the entire book of John and you can, read, you can read the reason why he wrote the book in John chapter 20, verse 31, where he says that you may believe, he's writing the book of John and he says why? He says, I'm writing this so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So right there, we can see John himself a disciple of Jesus, a follower of Christ who walked closely with him for three plus years on the earth had a very clear conviction that Jesus was God. He saw it himself. Um, yet again, we've got to go to further evidence. We've got Paul. Paul writes of Jesus. As to human nature, he was a descendant of David, fully man, right? and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Again, if you go and look at some of the words used here with the titles of Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Lord, all of those titles are titles you use for God. So again, we can see the followers of Christ believed that Jesus was God. But if you want even more evidence to explore, another one of the sources you can look at is from um, a really early extra biblical source. So this guy was named Pliny the Younger. Wouldn't that be nice to be known as the younger? <laughs> Not the older, the younger, right? Now, this guy was an observer of the life of Jesus. And in around about 112 AD, um, Pliny was one of the Roman emperor's ambassadors. And he was writing a letter to one of the Roman emperors, Trajan. And so this is what he said. Um, he, he was actually um, uh, quite responsible and involved in the persecution of many Christians. And he actually made a note in that process as he was part of the, the persecution of the Christians in early, uh, you know, the hundreds AD. Basically what Pliny wrote down was a whole bunch of the testimonies of what he saw, right? So when he saw the Christians doing what they do, this is what he wrote. He said, on an appointed day, Sunday, they had been accustomed to meet before daybreak and to recite hymns to Christ as to a God. So even he, a Roman, a person working closely for the emperor is observing the followers of Jesus and identifying that they believed right then and there, in the first hundred years after Christ, that they believed he was God. He's starting to catch this. So we're already starting to build some evidence around the life of Jesus, of his closest followers and his eyewitness observers, that he was something other than just a man. I think that's an important place to start. Would you agree? Yeah? If we want to get to, is Jesus God, we've probably got to start there. That's a good place to begin, right? So let's look at some further evidence of the deity of Jesus. Are you all following so far? Yeah. yeah? 
further evidence of the deity of Jesus. I hope you're doing well online and writing some notes. So let's have a look at his conception. Um, again, I mentioned to you earlier about this idea that Jesus was conceived not of man, right? He was conceived, it talked about being conceived of a virgin Mary. So the, the man wasn't involved. There was something else going on here. And it says in Luke 1 verse 35, the Holy Spirit, this is an angel speaking to Mary, right? She's a 16-year-old girl. She's been literally picked out by God. An angel comes and visits her and speaks to her. And this is what the angel said. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. So you can see right here that the life of Jesus, the Son of God on earth, began with a miracle. So again, there's something going on here. There's a pattern we can see right from day one, even before day one. It was prophesied that Jesus would be called the Savior of the world. His name was prophesied before he was even conceived, right? And so right here again, we can see that his birth, his life begins with a miracle. That reflects this greatness that he would later go on to demonstrate. And so what we see here is a pattern that echoes what is going on right at the beginning with Adam and Eve. Because Adam is the only other human not born of a woman. So what, what the writer is doing in talking about Jesus is picking up on a theme going right back to Adam and saying this person, Jesus, is the new Adam. Where Adam and Eve got it wrong, and in Adam and Eve, all of humanity get it wrong, Jesus is subverting the line of sin, and he is starting a new thing. He is the new humanity, showing us what it's really like to be human. So this idea that his conception was through the Spirit, this is linked with this idea of the holiness of God. So just like um, basically in Jewish thought, sin passed through to the next generation through the, the, the line of Adam, through the man. So by taking the man out of the picture, the symbol that's being painted here, the picture that's being painted is that Jesus is not impacted by the line of sin. Are you starting to follow the picture? So by being born of a virgin, he's not impacted by the sin that's being passed, again, in Jewish thought, symbolically through the man. And so I believe this is a good place to start by thinking about Jesus as God. Um, his conception was a miracle. And so that is the first place to start. Here's another one. Um, and this is a big one. Jesus actually did make some claims to be God. Now, some people would say, well, did Jesus ever say explicitly in these exact words, I am Yahweh? Well, not exactly, but in a lot of ways, in some roundabout ways, he absolutely did. More often than not, Jesus demonstrated the qualities of who Yahweh was and is, and he was testified to by eyewitnesses who saw those qualities in him and said, that has to be God. But he also said some very important things that actually were references to his divinity. So, some important explicit claims that Jesus made. Let's have a look at them. John 8, 56 to 58 says this, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, you're not yet 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Now, when Jesus said those words, I am, he was referring to when Yahweh said those exact words to Abraham. He was actually referring back to Old Testament passages where Yahweh himself spoke to Abraham and said, I am. So here's Jesus quoting God as if it's him. 
hands up if that's kind of a little bit explicit. He's kind of putting himself out there a little bit there. You set, you're starting to see that? So in John 8, 56 to 58, Jesus is actually making a pretty important statement. Why did he not just say before Abraham was, I was? Why didn't he just say that? Well, he was doing it on purpose. The reason he said that was that the Jewish leaders recognized instantly when he said before Abraham was, I am, when he said that, the Jewish leaders, they knew their Old Testament. So when he said those words, they would have recognized instantly what he was doing, which was to quote God. And actually this happened multiple times in scripture. He was quoting God talking to Moses from the burning bush, saying, I am who I am. And this phrase was God's way of telling Moses that he is the eternally existing one, the God who is the source of his own existence. So can you start to see Jesus actually kind of seemed like on the surface, maybe he's not saying, but really, if you were a Jew and you knew your Old Testament, he's saying, I'm God, straight up, right? Let's look at John chapter 10, verse 30 to 33. On yet another occasion, Jesus explicitly told the Jews this. He said, I and the Father are one. (laughs) Check that out. Can you imagine being a Jew who has a very, very, very strict observance to the idea that God is one, right? Deuteronomy 6.4, it's called the Shema, and it says, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. They had this idea which we call monotheism, right? And that ran in the face of a lot of other religious uh, groups at the time who were all worshipping lots of different gods. And the Jews were like, no, 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 we don't worship those gods. We worship Yahweh. There is only one God. So the Jews are sitting there going, no, 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 there is only one. And here's Jesus saying, well, hey, the Father, the one you say is God, me and him are one. (laughs) Can you start to see how they'd be getting a bit like little ruffled feathers right now? Like, If I was a Jew that's like super devout, I'm getting frustrated with Jesus. I'm getting angry. No wonder they wanted to kill him. No wonder they wanted to throw him out of their their synagogues. No wonder they wanted to kick him out of the cities he went to because he kept saying things like this. It says here, literally, it says again, when he said that, again, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I've shown you many great miracles from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any of these, replied the Jews, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. So even in the scripture itself, the people that are trying to stone Jesus are telling us that he thought he was God. Right there, in the Bible. Jesus says he is God. How about this one? Revelation 1 verse 17 to 18. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. This is Jesus in a vision that John has of him talking about who he is. Uh, Again, Revelation 22 verse 13. Jesus is again quoted in this, this passage and in this vision as saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now, you got to remember, if you go to these both of these scriptures in Revelation, They're actually pointing to Old Testament scripture where God, Yahweh himself says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. So here we have Jesus in Revelation pointing us all the way back to the Old Testament using words that God used to describe himself and coming all the way back over here to the New Testament. And now Jesus is using the same language. Are you getting my drift? Jesus is literally saying, I am God in these passages. All right. The last one here you can see is John uh, uh, 5, verse 16 to 18. Jesus claimed to be the unique son of God. And as a result, again, yet again, the Jewish leaders tried to kill him because, and you can see this, calling God his own father in doing so, Jesus was making himself equal with God. That's verse 18 of John 5. Can you start to see it? 
As soon as Jesus is saying, I'm equal with God, the Jews have a problem. Why? Because they are strictly holding to this idea that God is one. So when they hear something other than that, they're saying, no, you're wrong. You are blasphemous. Get out of here. (laughs) Right? Now, we're going to come back to that because that's a very important point. Strict adherence to one good idea, right, is a good thing. But what if God's doing something new to try and show you a bigger picture, right? And we're going to come back to that in a minute. So not only is there explicit claims, but there's also some implicit evidence. So it's less out there, if you will. I would say to all of you that some of the implicit claims of Jesus as God are his miracles. So when Jesus performs miracles, often what he's doing is showing people, I can do what God does, right? So when he heals on the Sabbath, who's allowed to do that? Only God can do that. When he forgives sin, who can do that? Only God can, do, can, can actually do that. When he raises a person from the dead, who can do that? Only God can do that. Are you following where I'm going? So the miracles of God are signposts that Jesus uses to point to his deity. Other signposts is his teaching. What what did Jesus do? Right throughout his ministry, he reinterpreted the law, right? So he would say to the Jews, he'd go into a synagogue and he'd say, well, the law says this, but I say unto you, and he'd raise the bar. Who can do that? Only Jesus, only God can do that, right? The rabbis didn't have authority to do that, which is why in the New Testament, when people came across Jesus in the synagogue and he's teaching, they were like, wow, you've got such authority. I wonder why that is. And they always compared him to the teachers of the law. So Jesus comes in and speaks about the law in a more authoritative way. Well, why is that? Because he was actually the only one that could. He was the only one that could. So these are implicit ideas that suggest God, uh, that Jesus is God. And not only that, but if you go and look at John 20, verse 28, you've got the story of doubting Thomas. Anyone familiar with the story of doubting Thomas? So you've got one of the disciples and he's done the journey with Jesus and Jesus dies and he rises again. And then you've got doubting Thomas and Thomas is basically He's kind of freaking out a little bit. He's dealing with some doubt, as do many of us. And when Thomas puts his finger in Jesus' side, this is the resurrected Christ who's visiting Thomas and saying, hey, I rose again. You saw me die. You knew that happened. And you knew that I was in the grave and in that tomb for a while. Ooh, i got someone calling me. That's nice. It's my wife. Oh, sorry, babe. I'll call you later. <laughs> I, I didn't answer it, I promise. Um, <laughs> maybe it was the Holy Spirit. He's like, stop, call. No. Uh, so here we have Thomas in a moment of grief. Jesus has just died. He's risen again and he comes and visits Thomas and he shows him the scars. He shows him the wounds that have now been healed. And so here you've got Thomas with all of these doubts and he touches the scars, knowing full well what happened and what caused them. And he falls to his knees and he says, my Lord and my God. Now, if Jesus wasn't God, he probably at that point would have picked Thomas up and said, no, 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 I am not God. Right? Go find someone else. He didn't deny it. He embraced him. Something in that is an implicit claim Not an explicit one, but it's an implicit suggestion that at least in Jesus' own mind and in the mind of his followers and the eyewitnesses and the early historians that they had some idea that Jesus was God. Are you you catching where we're going so far? Are you starting to see the evidence stack up a little bit? Just a little bit, right? We We could do lecture upon lecture of this. So that being the case, let's go look at some more evidence. All right, so we've got another 20 minutes. Am I right? Till two o'clock? All right. Gee, all right, let's go. We're going to move quick. Jesus' understanding of his own authority. This is another layer, again, in 
the evidence of Jesus being God. Uh, we heard earlier, Jono said this himself, Jesus claimed to have authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That's a big call. Can you imagine telling your child that? Maybe it is something you tell your kids. All authority that, you know, being naughty or whatever. <laughs> All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now do what I say. I don't know. But that's a big call to say that you've got all authority in heaven and on earth. And some scholars say this, that in Jesus, as he understood himself, there is an immediate confrontation with God's presence and and his very self offering judgment and salvation. When Jesus said all authority in heaven and on earth was given to him, We obviously know that God the Father has all authority. But in this moment, we see that he's given it to the Son. And the only way this would make sense is if the the Father knows that the Son will do everything according to the will of the Father. And this is the case with Jesus. He does everything according to the will of the Father. And therein lies his authority. That's the only way Jesus could have all authority in heaven and on earth. There's got to be a oneness, a connection, at very least an obedience in that relationship for that to be the case. Now, we've got to build on this even further. John 15, uh, 17, 1 to 5. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to those you have given him. Who gives eternal life? Who gives life? God does. There's a a thought right there. Now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So here's Jesus again indicating that he is God. Because if he wasn't, he wouldn't have been there before the world began. Are you starting to catch it? All right, let's build on this even further. What about his authority over the law? I won't go too much into this one, but Matthew 5, 21 to 22, again, we see Jesus say, you've heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder and anyone who murders is subject to judgment. He's quoting the 10 commandments. This is Yahweh coming on Mount Sinai and delivering the law to Israel. And here's Jesus taking that and going, you know what? Let me reinterpret this for you. This is the set of laws and rules that Israel had governed themselves by for millennia before Jesus had come. And here comes Jesus rocking up and saying, well, you know that stuff you guys have kind of tried to follow for the last couple thousand years? I'm going to tell you now what you should do about that. Let me reinterpret this for you, right? And he says, but I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. So who does that? Who does that? Only God can do that. Only God has the authority to do that. And notice, Jesus didn't abolish the law. Not only did he uphold it, but he actually took it to a whole nother level altogether. Right? So right here, we can see that Jesus is acting in a way that if he wasn't God would be completely nuts. A couple more thoughts. He also had authority in his teaching and over sickness and demons. So again, we see multiple examples where Jesus takes authority in situations where no one else has authority. Mark 1 verse 24, even the demons believe that he was God. (laughs) You want some more evidence? Well, the demons are saying it now. Even his own enemies are telling us he's God. Right? He went to Capernaum when the Sabbath came. He went to the synagogue, began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as teachers of the law. That's Mark 1.24. Then a man in the synagogue who was possessed with an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. <laughs> Even the demons are telling us that he's God. And then Jesus said, 
be quiet, come out of him. So the demon confirms it, or the demon says it, you're God. And Jesus says, okay, I'll, let me show you I'm God, come out of him. And he did. If he wasn't God, it wouldn't have happened. Are you following where I'm going? So again, we can see more layers to our understanding of Jesus as God. Let's look at some other ones. What about his authority to forgive sin and judge the world? Again, we've got to understand that when Jesus is forgiving sin, there's only one person that according to Jews was allowed to do that. And so he does it and implicitly is claiming that in doing so, he is God. I'm going to skip further forward because I want to get to some other things, but I think we've got the picture that there's a whole lot to be said from what Jesus did, not just what Jesus said, that is pointing us to the fact that he is God. Tap the person next to you and tell you, tell them this is about to get good. <laughs> All right. All right, what about this one? Jesus had authority over the Sabbath and over the weather and obviously over death. So Jesus had, he claimed to have authority and interpretive rights. So people said, hey, can you, are you allowed, who's allowed to heal on the Sabbath? Jesus went and healed on the Sabbath. What would you rather me do? And he, he basically reinterpreted a lot of these ideas that the Jews were following. Again, this shows you he's got authority that no one else has. And he is using that authority in ways that only God should use it. All right. Um, again, we can see many stories in the scripture where Jesus claimed supernatural authority over the weather. So we see him walking on water, for example. We see him coming across, uh, you know, walking across the water on a lake, getting in the boat and then telling the weather to shut up and then it just gets calm again, right? Only God can do that. That's something only God can do. He's doing it on purpose. He's trying to show us and he's trying to show the readers of the scripture that he is God. There's a point being made here. Now, if you want even further examples, I must be getting lots of emails or something. I don't know what's going on there. But if you want to look, um, we, we read earlier that John wrote his gospel so that we would know Jesus is God. We read it in John chapter 20. So here's some things John does in his uh, book of the Bible that unpacks his divinity. This is John writing very clearly to try and convince his audience that Jesus is God, right? So here's some of the things. John presents us with seven miracles. Seven things that God does that Jesus also does. Every one of these miracles is there to point us to Christ being God. All of them are. So the first one. Turning water into wine. That's a huge one. Turning water into wine. It's the first miracle we see take place in the scripture. Now, there's heaps I could say about turning water into wine, but again, who does that? No one does that but God. He's demonstrating creative agency. No one else has that agency, that power, that ability but God. Miracle number two, the healing of the official son. Uh, again, there's so many examples of what he does here. Um, the healing of the official son is again another signpost to Jesus' deity. The healing at the pool of Bethesda where you've got a guy who's been sitting by the pool for years and years and years and years and years. And he's waiting for his healing. And as the, uh, the story would go in Jewish culture, you would sit by the pool and whoever fell in the pool first would get healed. An angel would come and they'd get healed, right? But then Jesus rocks up and he subverts the whole story and he says, well, do you want to be well? And the guy goes, yeah. And he says, okay, we'll take him out up and walk. And he did. So right here again, Jesus is doing what God does. So John is trying to stack the miracles one on top of the other to show us and point us to the fact that Jesus is God. Miracle number four, feeding of the 5,000. Who does that? God does. Walking on the water, who does that? God does. Healing of the man born blind, who does that? God does. And then the last one, raising Lazarus from the dead, who does that? God does. And in fact, in this story, 
Jesus claims himself to be the resurrection and the life. Who says that? God does. Are you starting to see the Bible writers are trying to tell you something? And so is Jesus at the time. If you want more evidence, not only that, but in the, the Gospel of John, we see seven I am statements. Seven I am statements. Do you remember the words I am? I am that I am, going back to Moses in Exodus. All of these statements are again symbolically being used by both Jesus and John to point us to Jesus being God. Every single one of them. And each of these statements declare the deity of Jesus. They do it in two ways. Firstly, they overtly declare his deity through the symbolism. So the bread and the light and the gate and the good shepherd and the resurrection. So there's a symbolism going on here, but the I am is the big bit. That's the important bit. So when Jesus yet again is saying, I am, in this particular, these particular passages, not only is he going back and using imagery and language that the Jews would understand, but in Greek, the words he uses, I am, are also translated as self-existent one. So anyone who's a Greek, who's hearing what Jesus is saying, is not just seeing it through a Jewish lens, they're now seeing it through a Greek lens and they're going, hang on, he's saying this in my, my worldview now. He's saying he's the self-existent one, not just to the Jews who have all this history and knowledge and understanding. He's now using my language and he's saying the same thing. Um, so all of that to say, these miracles and these statements put together again form a solid foundation upon which we can understand Jesus' own self-understanding as God. All right. Are you following so far? Yeah? Okay. I reckon we need to go for a couple more and then we're going to take a break. Are we good? Yeah? Jesus, bless our brains. Amen. All right. We're going to keep going forward. So let's have a look at a couple more thoughts. I want to pick up on this idea, further evidence of Jesus' divinity. Um, by the way, this is a really, really, or a portion of a very famous painting by Raphael. Um, and yeah, it's on obviously Jesus' resurrection. You'll see the full picture in the next slide. So let's have a look at Jesus in other portions of Scripture. Um, again, after the break, we're going to pick up on the heresies, okay? So that's kind of where we're going after that. But right now, we're just going to keep building this foundation in Scripture to understand Jesus as God. Let's have a look at Jesus in Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. Um, this is a really important passage. Hebrews chapter 1 is incredibly intentional in presenting us with Jesus as the ultimate high almighty God. The, the, the language in Hebrews is absolutely stunning in the in the original text um, but what happens here in Hebrews 1 is he is described in verse 3 as the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful being so again who does that God does again we've got the author of the Hebrews pointing us to what Jesus does and he's doing the things that God does. Um, again, in verse 3, you can see that he is now seated. He's, he's, uh, the picture that gets painted in Hebrews is that he is now seated in authority at the right hand of majesty on high. The right hand was a seat of authority. It was a seat of power. And so again, there's this description building that Jesus is in fact God. And if you want further evidence, they build on it in verse 4. He's described as being superior to the angels. He's, been, he's described as being sup superior to Moses, who was an incredibly authoritative figure in the Jewish uh, world. And he's also being described as superior to the high priests. Further to that, in verse 8 and 9, he's actually spoken of by God himself as the Son, as God. So in basically in this particular passage, 
there's a quote there referring back to Psalm 45, verse 6 to 7. Um, and you can go and read that later for the sake of time. But he's also in verse 10 to 12 described as Lord and uh, creator of the universe. So right here in Hebrews, again, you can see there is a very clear, explicit understanding that Jesus is God. Let's have another look at Jesus in Paul. Jesus in the writings of Paul. He wrote a lot of the New Testament. And again, Paul frequently, he actually frequently talks about Jesus being God himself. Um, Colossians 1 verse 15 to 20 uh, refers quite explicitly to that. Let me quickly pull that open for you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. All right, we're almost there. I hope you're doing well online. Still there writing notes, love and life. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, chapter 1, 15. Okay, it says here, The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Notice the language. Colossians chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, same language. Purposeful, intentional, on point. Paul is doing something very, very specific here. It says this, verse 16, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Notice that. God was pleased, he's talking about Jesus, to have all of his fullness dwell in him, Jesus. Think about that. Right there in Paul is a very explicit statement that God is his fullness, his fullness, the fullness of who God is dwells in the person of Jesus. So again, there's another very clear statement that Jesus is God. Romans 10 verse 9, salvation comes by confessing Jesus is Lord. Who saves? God saves. Well, here Jesus is described as the one who saves. So again, another statement saying that Jesus is God. 2, uh, 2 Timothy 4 verse 1, who judges the living and the dead? Well, again, according to a Jew, God does. Who is described as judging the living and the dead? Jesus. Are we getting this? I'm hoping this is all stacking one on top of the other. Again, Philippians 2 verse 5 to 11. What a powerful scripture. Jesus is described as being God emptied himself, became a man, and was exalted to the status of deity or equality with the Father. You can go read that scripture. Again, there's a very clear, explicit statement right through the writings of Paul that Jesus is God. And lastly, Jesus as Lord. There's so many scriptures that are used um, with this in mind, with uh, ref reference to Jesus. But you've got to understand that the word Lord is the word Kyrios. There's a specific word being used in the scripture and it refers to the risen and ascended Jesus. Um, you got to realize that this is also another reference to Old Testament. It's a reference to Yahweh. Another word for Yahweh, another name of who God is in the Old Testament is Adonai. And the word Lord, Adonai, Old Testament, Yahweh, God the Father, is the same word that is referred in the New Testament for Jesus. Are you catching this? The Father in the Old Testament is referred to as Adonai, Lord. Jesus is now being referred to as Adonai, Lord. So again, we're seeing that Jesus is very clearly being referred to and understood as God himself. Now you can see right at the bottom of the screen there that Kyrios, this word for Lord, is used in the New Testament not just the old, but the new. It's used multiple times and it's used to describe God the Father, the sovereign God and Jesus. So again, why would they confuse the usage if it wasn't on purpose? The whole point is to tell us in the scripture that Jesus is God. Now, I think it's time for a break. <laughs> Has that been helpful so far? Yeah? Those of us who've joined for Open Day, have you enjoyed so far? 
Okay, well, there's plenty more where that came from, but I'm going to invite Zoe up here to come and tell us what is happening next. I love it. So we're going to take a break, but how about you tell us what's going on for all of those so online good. and everyone in the room, and then we'll take a break. Love it. I'm back again, but I thank you to you guys, all you current students, for allowing our Open Day guests to be in the room. It's been awesome. Um, so if you are an Open Day guest today, in the foyer, we're about to have our course consultation expo. So that's where you can ask more specific questions about the different courses that you're interested in. And if you're online with us, this is where you can jump on the Zoom link and we have the exact same thing happening online. So we've got a bunch of our staff and our trainers online ready to answer your questions and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you about what course you might be interested in. So if you're online, you can jump on that Zoom link. And if you're on in this room right now, you can jump into the foyer with me. But and thank you. just before we go, just to let everybody know, we'll take 10 minutes. So if you're wanting to get some questions answered and you can do that, even if you take 10 or 15 minutes and then you just want to pop back in, you're absolutely welcome. So don't feel like you can't. If you just want to come in and finish the lecture, you're welcome to do that. But please go get your questions answered. That's the most important bit. And uh, either way, thank you for joining us today. If I don't see you again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And so, yeah, why don't we give it up for all of our guests who've joined us today. Let's take 10. I'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in 10 minutes. All right. Thanks very much.
Give it up. 